and the involvement of the the entire crowd here of course another sellout crowd the 69th meeting as we mentioned the Irish leading it 39 to 24 SC one of the last time out that was in the Coliseum in 1996 and USC has not won here in South Bend since 1981 and Charlie was interesting talking to both teams and even coaching staffs uh, the players and some of the coaches said look this is our bowl game we don't have those national championship records either one of us but we can treat this as our bowl game and now you see the Trojans of the University of Southern California as they enter Notre Dame Stadium greeted by a solid round of booze <laughs> as expected Charlie I might mention John Robinson the head coach the company says team on the field Notre Dame got 57,700 requests for tickets for, for, for people to come and see this football game so they don't care what the record is and Notre Dame of course play like a champion part of the tradition here as they get set to make their entrance a rivalry that goes back to the year 1926 and it was Newt Rockney's wife Bonnie who came up with the idea after talking with some ladies from the University of Southern California of taking the train and going to the West Coast every other year in November or December and playing the Trojans of USC and that's the way it all started in 1926 well there ought to be a trophy passed back and forth from school to the school the, the, shillelagh, the shillelagh or the bonnie it should be <laughs> the bonnie she started this even better and as the irish now gather in the tunnel is involved in this game. Bob Davy, the head coach, gathering his troops under the goalposts. And here are the fighting Irish of Notre Dame. an official look at the weather this afternoon 58 degrees humidity 52 percent just a bit of a breeze the forecast is mostly sunny as we join John Dockery on the sideline John you know Charlie Irish coach Bob Davies has been looking for a spark all season long from somebody last week against Pittsburgh he got that spark in the person of Alan Rossum the cornerback return man who took the opening kickoff against Pittsburgh and returned it 93 yards, an electrifying return for a touchdown to set the tone and give the Irish some momentum. Rossum on his career, five returns for touchdowns. As a matter of fact, when you look at the Irish since 86, their returns for touchdown total 29, while they've only allowed one. And certainly Irish better be on their toes today because USC has their own rocket return man in R.J. Soward. And some say he's even better than Alan Rossum. So, Charlie, there could be sparks on both kickoff and return teams today. Back to you. John, before we uh, lose you right here, you were out on the campus before the ball game. What is it like here? Is it? I can't. <laughs> really? I can't. I don't think we can have communications with him. That's the excitement on the sideline here at Notre Dame Stadium. No University of Southern California won the toss. They'll defer. Notre Dame will receive. John Robinson and his record and Bob Davey in his first year as a head coach at Notre Dame. Two coaches going through the exact same thing. Bob Davey trying to reconstruct the Notre Dame Irish football program here. He's the young guy. And of course, John Robinson, his second trip to USC, he's kind of taken everything on him with their very poor start, just two and three on this season. He said, look, play me. If it doesn't work, get me out of here. But I think he has a grand plan. I think he still is connected with the players. And 
and there is no other football team that people talk about in Los Angeles. I mean, UCLA, they play football, but that's a basketball school. Raiders and Rams are gone. So, you, you just alienated half of the city of well, Los Angeles with that statement. <laughs> they got other things to worry about. They got a good football team this yes, year. Yes, though. they do. But still, <laughs> if USC can win in football, all's right with the world. And John Robinson knows that and has really taken some press, some real hits out in Los Angeles. Bob Davey, there's grumblings, but they don't say it out loud. He said it's crisis. And he said our backs are to the wall. And, of course, he has a great sense of humor. He said, and in addition, it's a million-man march. Yes. And already, I have 12. Yes. <laughs> John Robinson does know how to play to the press. <laughs> Alan Rossum, the great return man for Notre Dame, the speedster out of Dallas. Adam Rendon of USC will kick it away. And we are underway here at Notre Dame Stadium. Robson has it at the four-yard line. To the 15-20. Has a great return up the middle to the far side across the foot. Still going at the 50. He slips two tackles at the 45-yard line. An unbelievable return. And Petros Papadakis saves the touchdown. 55 yards on the return. Nothing fancy about this return, Charlie. It's a middle return. Actually, the guys up front do an excellent job because you, you can see how far Rossum gets before there is any real contact. The kicker does an excellent job of slowing him down for Papadakis to make the tackle. Great field position for the Irish to start. And they start at the USC 41-yard line first down. And as expected, they start on the ground with Autry Denson. Autry Denson. Stopped by Antoine Simmons. Let's look at the offense of Notre Dame. And first, that offensive line. Now, this is the new addition. Pettigrew has played everywhere on the offensive line except center. Now at left tackle since Clevenger is out for the season. This is the guy, Audrey Denson, and Ken Berry. Excellent blocking back up in front of him. Second down and three. Wallace hands off to Denson again. Has the hole on the right side. 25-yard line first down. And from the get-go, the offensive line of Notre Dame is dominating USC. Let's look at that USC defense. Chad Morton with the last tackle. Actually, this defensive line has had its problems. Last week, they allowed Arizona State 236 yards rushing. Spot the ball at the 25-yard line of SC. This is the opening drive of the ball game, a sparkling 55-yard kickoff return by Alan Rossum, linebackers in secondary. They have their work cut out for him here. Gets him to the left side. Hit, breaks the tackle, 10-yard line. 15 yards on the play. Dalen McCutcheon makes the stop. Uh, Charlie, last year when these two teams met, even though USC won, Denson had 160 yards on 33 carries. This is just the isolation play, the lead. Nothing fancy about it. I think one of the things that Notre Dame's offense has decided upon is not run Denson to the corner, running between the tackles. Denson has 31 yards in three carries. A double tight end offensive set. First down for the Irish, and a timeout is called. SC will take a timeout before the play gets on. Yeah, they had the wrong personnel on the field. If you may have seen at the last moment, Abdul Malik run off of the field. And the middle linebacker, Claiborne, had the presence of mind to at least, here's the guy running off. The middle linebacker, Claiborne realizes, we don't have enough guys on the field here. He turns around to the umpire and calls the timeout just in time. 13 minutes, 23 seconds. That is the time remaining. We're in the first quarter. This is the opening thrust of the ball game by Notre Dame, and that offensive line is completely dominating yes. the defense of USC. And strangely, coming into this football season, John Robinson thought his defensive line was going to be a stout bunch and worried about his offensive line. And the offensive line has not done its job, and neither has the defensive line. And you start that power pyramid in football with the guys up front. 
That's Pete Burns, the defensive coordinator right there. And for USC to not be able to run the ball so far this season and give up the run, very, very unusual for a USC football team. Notre Dame successful with the run last week against Pitt. They said we we're going to try and continue it, and they certainly are starting on a high note. Yeah, 52 carries last week for 317 yards. Yes, that's successful yeah. running game. The pitch is to Denson. Shut off inside, goes to the outside, looks for a block, cuts back inside, goes to the one-yard line. Mike Rosenthal was the pulling guard that led the way, and Mark Cassano saved the touchdown for USC. And also an excellent lead block by Barry right here. Good seal job done by the guys inside. You see Barry 28 with a block on the middle linebacker, Cassano. And right down to the goal line, and Ron Paulus comes out. And Jarius Jackson comes in with a full house backfield. In short yardage, we will see this all afternoon, and it's Aubrey Dempson to the right side into the end zone for the touchdown. His seventh of the year. Dempson scoring from just inside two yards away, capping the drive that was set up by Allen Ross's return. There is Jackson in there because Bob Davies said, look, with him at quarterback on the full house backfield, it is our best chance to score inside the 20 and in short yardage and goal line situations. Nothing that the run balls can't do. Jackson's a better threat to run the ball. The extra point by Jim Sanson is good, and Notre Dame moves out in front of USC by a score of 7 and nothing. And we're only two minutes and a few seconds into the ballgame. Service by Notre Dame and Adidas by Dean Whitter. There are many ways to measure success. We measure it one investor at a time. And by GTE, the official telecommunications consultant to the NCAA. Welcome back to Notre Dame Stadium where the Irish are up 7-0 for their head coach Bob Davey over John Robinson and the University of Southern California. The Trojans with their first opportunity now to move on offense. R.J. Sauer, number 18, their big play man, and Dalen McCutcheon, number one, also a big play man. They are deep on the return. And Scott Sinja is going to kick it off. Now, Sauer has returned to kickoff for a touchdown, so John Robinson would like to, a replay of what Notre Dame just did with Scott Alan Russell. Will kick off for the Irish. Oh, short kick. They don't want to kick it to the guys back there. They're kicking it high and short to keep it away from him, taken by one of the upbacks and down on his knee at that point. So the play will be dead at the 22-yard line. Well, Bob Davey is saying, I'm not about to have Soward or McCutcheon follow up a good kickoff return by Alan Rossum. And his knee didn't go down there. Zeke Marino. And there, was, the and there was no signal of a fair catch. Actually, he could have run with that football. SC will start now from their own 23-yard line first down. And their first opportunity in offense with John Fox, the quarterback. Fox hands off to DeLon Washington, who is starting at running back. And Washington carries to the 25-yard line, a pickup of a couple. It'll be second and eight. Here's that SC offensive line. It's big, it's tough, but it has not produced. Backs and receivers. Uh, you've got a game breaker here, here, and here if John Fox, the quarterback, can get time to throw it. Fox spins, he hands off to Washington. Washington a straight shot across the 30-yard line. Out to the 31, good for six. It'll be third down and two. Stopped by Bobby Howard as we look at that defensive Notre Dame. Uh, Corey Bennett back at nose guard after a couple weeks off with a uh, bad knee. And here's where the responsibility lies. These linebackers up here have to handle the run of USC with seven so they can drop the four in coverage to make sure the real quick and fast receivers from USC can't get the big play. Third down and two. The pitch is to Washington. Washington has the corner and he has the first down as he goes near the 35-yard line. That will be enough to pick it up. 
Now, Charlie, to understand how difficult a situation USC is in this year, they are averaging just 95 yards rushing per game. That's 2.6 yards per carry for this offense. Uh, you can see, look at 94-8 a game. They just don't, they haven't really decided or figured out exactly what they do best offensively to this point in the season. Malako McKenzie makes his first appearance in the ball game. John Robinson calls him a ricochet runner as he bounces off of defenders. And he goes down near the 40-yard line. He can't bounce off of Bobby Howard who brings him down. And he is a true freshman, has a sprained left shoulder, but uh, wants to play against Notre Dame. Wants to play every week, wants to play every snap, wants to play both ways. That's the kind of a player McKenzie is. He is only the third true freshman to start a tailback for USC. He gets a call again, tries the left side, cuts back over the middle, and he'll pick up the first down as he goes across the 45 out to the 46-yard line. He's brought down by Corey Miner, the linebacker who is from Laverne, California, wants to attend UCLA Law School and become a sports agent. A sports agent. Sports agent. Very smart on his part. No headaches. I generally get big checks. That's a very smart. No heavy lifting. No heavy lifting. First down, USC. They started this drive at their own 23-yard line. The Irish are up by a score of 7-0. The flea flicker is dropped and then thrown behind the defense. It is incomplete. The drop lateral off on the flea flicker the defensive safeties had time to recover Deveron Harper who said I don't want to let anybody get behind me and he did but he had time to catch up actually this ball should have been caught and Fox does an excellent job of getting it up but watch how he just floats by Deveron Harper Harper does catch up to him gets his hands up there that, that's an excellent job by number 10 Deveron Harper just his third game at safety. Read his eyes, got his hands in there to knock the ball away. But R.J. Sauer did have to slow up. And he has the speed to get away from the safeties once that he's behind him. Here's DeLon Washington back in the ball game for USC. Here in McKenzie will be going in and out throughout the whole afternoon. You can certainly see what USC's choice is to do here. And that is try a number of different running backs and awful lot of two tight end formations, Charlie, and then suck the defense up and then try for the big play down the field. Greg Madison, defensive coordinator, knows how athletic this offense of USC is. 50-yard line, third down and five. Blitz, box to throw over the middle. It is high, but it is caught pulled down by Antoine Harris, the freshman from Loyola in Los Angeles. First freshman to start at tight end since World War II. Gain of 13. First down. Well, this is an excellent read. The tight end's right here. He reads the blitz properly. So does the quarterback, Fox. Devin Harper, again, he doesn't want to get beat deep. He's about 10 yards <laughs> off when he's supposed to be up there on the tight end. First down pickup. His brother, Dwayne, cornerback for San Diego Chargers, in the stands here today. That is his role model. First down, 37-yard line. Whistle sound as McKenzie is pulled down. We've got a flag fly. The officials from the Big Ten, David Whitvoid is the referee. Prior to the snap, we have a false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. That will take the ball back to the 42-yard line, first down and 15. In case you joined us past the two-minute mark in the ball game, Alan Rossum, a 55-yard kickoff return, and from that point on, off redemption, in five plays, took it into the end zone, all on the ground. McKenzie at the 40-yard line. Just a couple. It'll be second down and 13, and John Fox, the quarterback, is going to have to go to the air. Uh, when you mentioned going to the air, it is interesting that John Robinson proclaimed before this season start that the era of passing the ball at USC is over. But then he goes out and he hires an offensive coordinator named Hugh Jackson, who was at the University of California with Steve Mariucci, the West Coast offense. And they do throw the ball at the West Coast offense. Second down and 13. Here's the screen left side, well diagnosed by Bobby Howard. McKenzie pulled it in, and Howard pulled him down. A loss of 
six yards on the play. It'll be third down and 19. Howard not fooled. Decent speed by the linebackers at Notre Dame. He reads the guard perfectly. He is right out there in the flat to make a sure-handed tackle. And that's Bobby Howard's fourth tackle so far at the beginning of this game. Third down. Three wide receivers. Box to throw. He can run. Goes on the run, passes complete, going deep over the middle to his tight end, Antoine Harris. He is going to pick up the first down. He needed 19. He got 23 yards on the play. Six defensive backs in the ball game. Here is the tight end right here. Fox again does a great job. You're going to see 13 begin to rush and then drop out. Now, he's kind of checking on the tight end, but when Fox threatens to run, 13 Friday comes up to the line of scrimmage. Tight end comes open. Nice completion. Very smart play by the quarterback Fox. This drive started back at the 23-yard line three times. SC has converted. Reverse. Down here's the reverse with the quarterback Fox. There's the lead blocker and jumping to the outside is RJ Sowell. And he will go out just shy of the five-yard line, picking up 17 yards on the play. Ivory Covington finally got him, and SC, they're using the whole bag of tricks. Why not? Absolutely. That's a new bag. Yeah. He's going to come from here, and Soward has such unbelievable speed. The Trojans try to get the ball in his hands as many times as possible. And this reverse with a player of that speed will work in any and all instances. Just outside the five-yard line, Soward averaging a touchdown every six and a half times he touches the ball. This will just be a straight shot by DeLon Washington. It was first down and goal to go just outside the five. Now at the three, it'll be second down and goal to go. Uh, John Robinson, in talking to us, said we need to play with emotion here today. We need to play like we're having fun. We need to play relaxed. And actually, the play calling here in the first series offensively looks relaxed. It looked like fun. The ball players all told us that they were afraid to make a mistake. Yes. They were afraid. He, and John said, like, you got to turn loose. Just turn play. Washington, the second back, two into the end zone. DeLon Washington scoring for USC. Capping a drive of 77 yards. And for DeLon Washington, that is his first touchdown of the year. Watch the trap here, Charlie. You're going to see an excellent job and a lead trap that allows this hole up right up through the middle of the defense. Pullback leads very well. Good, quick sprint by Washington into the end zone. And that's a relaxed scoring drive. Adam Abrams will now go for the tie. And he has it. And USC has now come from behind to tie Notre Dame at seven with six and a half minutes left to go in the first quarter. Number 24, Delon Washington, the senior from Dallas, scoring his first touchdown of the year. He was a thousand-yard rusher for uh, for USC two years ago, and Allen Rossum on the sideline. He's not deep for this kickoff return. Tony Driver is deep for the return. You know, I have a feeling they may have taken Rossum out just to get the ball kicked to Driver. You may be right. Figuring that SC would counter the same way that Notre Dame did. And Driver will feel this one at the 11-yard line. And is going to be dropped about the 18. He'll have seven yards on the return. Ify Ojalete of Los Alamitos. I'm proud of the you. the tackle. I'm proud of you. I am too. <laughs> Way to go, Ify. Saturday, November the 1st, the NBC Saturday Trilogy returns with all new thrills. First, The Pretender is back, then the newest trilogy show, Sleepwalkers, followed by the return of Profiler. The all-new NBC Saturday Trilogy is coming your way in two weeks here on NBC. Notre Dame and SC now tied at seven. 
Jensen, who has been the only car ball carrier for Notre Dame from scrimmage, will pick up a couple of yards to the 20-yard line. He now has six carries for 43 yards rushing in the ball game. Well on his way to the century mark, possibly for the 14th time in his career. Yeah, that, that's he's the only guy other than Russell that's touched the ball. The center quarterback and Audrey Denson and Allen Russell on the kickoff report. The play action fake, sets, throws, passes complete. He goes to Malcolm Johnson. That is his 28th reception on the year, 13 yards, first down Notre Dame. Uh, the two corners that you have here for USC, this is this is an interesting matchup that Notre Dame is going to have all day. Kelly is considered the better of the two. He and McCutcheon are in tandem considered probably the best corners there is in the country. Bob Davies said, we're not afraid of them. We're going to go at them. We can't avoid them. First down, Notre Dame. Jensen to the near side, looks for the corner, has it. Is hit around the 43-yard line, comes down about the 45 or the 46. 12 more yards to his total. Dalen McCutcheon cut him down for USC. First down, Irish. Now, last week, of course, Denson, 19 carries, 128 yards, two touchdowns. He's got two 100-yard rushing games in a row. And look, when, when you can dominate a team like they did last week, Notre Dame, have 52 rushes for 317 yards, you're going to win an awful lot of football games. Well, let's give this time to Ken Berry, the first back through the fullback. That is only his 13th carry on the year. Antoine Simmons, the linebacker slash safety for USC, makes the stop. Well, the ball just outside SC's 45-yard line. Charlie, I was going to say, if nothing else, that win last week against Pittsburgh convinced Jim Coletto, the offensive coordinator and offensive line coach, that we're going to hammer it at him until they slow us down. And here's the hammer again. And it's Dixon sliding through the line to the 40-yard line. That offensive line of Notre Dame's with Pettigrew, Wisney, Kaczynski, Rosenthal, and Dowdy are dominating the ball game on offense. David Gibson with the last tackle. And Charlie, here's something that you didn't used to see with Notre Dame offensive linemen. You, you see little trap blocks and things just bouncing through there. And you see Rosenthal, Rosenthal 79 coming on the trap play. Uh, with this new configuration of the offensive line, sometimes the offensive linemen have two-point stances. They can run the trap play. Previous years, they really were not very good at it. Notre Dame averaging almost eight yards a rush as Denson goes to the right side, 36-yard line. He picks up four on the play. Seems to be absolutely tireless, too. Yes. And I'm sure just as soon as I say that, they'll replace him. But again, a nice block by Ken Berry, 28 out in front. Denson stays right on Berry's shoulder to get as many yards as he possibly can out of there. David Gibson with a nice play off the block for the tackle. Denson has already rushed down for 64 yards in nine carries. Play action, fake ball is rolling right. Throws the pass back underneath the coverage. It is complete down the right sideline. He goes to Ken Berry, the fullback, 12 yards, first down. Charlie, this is a perfect call. Teams call this sticky. Ten guys at the line of scrimmage, free safety. Fake the run, bootleg. Fullback comes out in the flat. A, an absolutely perfect call for the sticky defense. And Jim Coletto has to be proud of that. I'm betting that's an audible. And Ron Paulus, when he sees the sticky, there's Coletto upstairs. An excellent call. Bobby Brown wide to the near side. Johnson wide to the far side. Denson on a sweep to the near side. Avoids one SC player. Cuts back to the 20 yard line. A flag is down. He'll go out about the 15, but we'll go back to check out the marker as Richard Cook, the junior, from Morris High School in San Diego, brought him down. Nice ball, Jack. Holding called against Notre Dame. The holding call against the Irish. And that's the only thing that can stop Notre Dame's running attack is Notre Dame. Yeah, to this point. 
and it's been all, almost all, Andre Dixon. During the play, we have holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, repeat first down. The ball goes back to the 27 yard line. It'll be first down and 13. Paul is looking at his menu on his wrist for the next play. Tim Ritter, the junior from Omaha, 6'7", 298, is now in at tight end. A look at the play selection thus far in the ballgame. Paul is a play action play. Throws at the last minute, high and wobbly, but it is caught by Rakai Nelson down the sideline. 23 yards on the play. Antoine Simmons had the coverage from USC. And Wallace was nailed just as he let it go. Well, there should have been a flag. There is no question that the receiver pushed the defensive back. None whatsoever. Well, you can't really see the shove there. But look, Nelson does an excellent job of concentrating on the football. It almost looked like it was a good thing it was underthrown. Still can't quite catch up the shove. The uh, USC sideline was complaining to no avail. First down goal to go. Here's Dixon on the right side. Jerry is Jackson now the quarterback. Goal line short yardage. He comes in. Paulus comes out. It'll be second down and goal to go for Notre Dame. They started this drive back at their own 18. And this is something that uh, Ron Paulus, the quarterback for the Notre Dame Irish, does not like. He does not want to come off the field, but he admits that Darius Jackson is a better threat to run the ball and does increase Notre Dame's chances to score. Here's Dixon, right side. He's going to lead to about the one-yard line, where it'll be third down and goal to go. Well, we, when we talked to Ron Paulus yesterday, we said it's very simple. Score from 20 yards out. Don't yes. get it close. That's right. As if you had control of that. Yeah, that's right. One minute, 45 seconds and counting. Time remaining in the first quarter. Currently, the ball game tied at seven as Notre Dame tries to break that tie. And there is Paulus along the sideline. Full house back to him. Now going into the left, and it's a touchdown for Notre Dame. Tony Driver goes in. Freshman from Louisville, capping the drive of some 82 yards, scoring his second touchdown of the year. What a shot. Somebody other than Denson carries it. What's going on here? Denson will attempt the extra point. It is good. And Notre Dame moves out in front for the second time in the ball game. They now lead 14 to 7. Back with the kickoff. In the first quarter, Notre Dame on top by a score of 14 to 7. Scott Sinja will be kicking off to either RJ Sauer or Dalen McCutcheon. They are the two deep backs. Now they're starting to edge up to the 10 yard line. As the last time, Sinja with a short high kick. But you expect now for McCutcheon and showered to uh, be edging in that direction. McKenzie and Bob Aubrey are two of the up backs. This one is going to carry further than they wanted it to, and here's R.J. Soward on the return, and they use the sideline against him, and they take him out of bounds. Nice play. Following Notre Dame football online at NBCSports.com, Bob Davey talks about the Irish schedule and the state of the football program at Notre Dame. Let's read through the mailbag and hear what's on the minds of Notre Dame fans. Ooh, it's all at NBCSports.com. Bob Davey doesn't read any of that stuff. Says he doesn't watch TV, doesn't read the newspapers. Well, he's so far, far at least. Now. So far, at least. <laughs> SC will start this drive at their own 29 yard line. We've had three offensive drives. We've had three touchdowns. SC starts on the ground as they did before. Delon Washington, the senior from Dallas, who scored the touchdown for SC, is stopped by the linebacker, Lamont Bryan. The play selection thus far. Uh, I, think, I think it's key. Whether they can run or not, they're going to try to convince their opponent today that they, each has a running game. 
And again, USC, one of the most shocking statistics about this football team to this point, just averaging just 95 yards rushing per game. This is tailback U. But as John Robbins did, if the defense puts eight in the box, you can't run against them. Quick pass outside. The tight end, freshman from Loyola, Antoine Harris. 13 yards, first down. Stopped by Friday the 13th. The junior from Houston. Uh, this young man is a true freshman. Antoine Harris. Uh, last year at this time, you know, he's going to homecoming, playing some high school football somewhere. This kid has made an amazing transformation into a major college football player. And you can see he is a load and has three receptions for 48 yards in the ball game. Washington, absolutely nothing there. Maybe a half a step, and that's going to be it. It'll be second down and 10. Uh, Charlie, I don't want to go back to the last play, but let me tell you why Harris has three catches to this point. Why? The Notre Dame is paying so much attention to the two guys on the outside. Sour, they want to make sure he doesn't get them, that you're going to help the outside guys with coverage, and you're going to leave the middle open for the tight end. So the, the quarterback box is doing an excellent job, as is Hugh Jackson, the offensive coordinator, of taking what's open. And time has expired at the end of the first quarter. Notre Dame leads 14-7, back with the second period in a moment. This is Bob Trumpy and John Dockery here at Notre Dame Stadium as we continue this great intersectional rivalry between the University of Southern California and Notre Dame, started in 1926. This is the 69th renewal. Notre Dame is up 14-7 to give us to the second back through. And that is the freshman from Mission Viejo, Malifo McKenzie. Devron Harper making the tackle. Actually, nothing fancy about this blocking. And this is a big, aggressive offensive line. Just straight ahead blocking. Excellent timing. McKenzie right at the spot where the block is made to get right by the tackler. Uh, McKenzie is... He's Samoan. You see the tattoo on his arm. That's rushing USC 67, Denson 74. Timeout taken by Fox for USC. They've now burned two timeouts. SC will have only one timeout remaining here in the first half. We have 14.37 left to go in the second quarter. This is a must-see weekend on NBC. It continues tomorrow with an NFL doubleheader beginning at 12 noon Eastern time with the NFL on NBC. Greg Gumbel and company will visit with two of the league's premier stars, Deion Sanders and John Elway. Well, that's too extreme. <laughs> Whoa. <All right. laughs> Plus a full examination that the doctor is coming to tell of the most intriguing current pro football rivalry, the Patriots and the Jets. That will be interesting. Then in game one of our doubleheader, most of you see Mark Brunel and the Jacksonville Jaguars take on Troy Aikman and the Dallas Cowboys. Quickly, what's happened to the Cowboys in one word? They've gotten old. They've gotten old and hurt, and uh, the injury to Moose Johnson changes the personality of that football team forever. Then in game two, Elway and the Broncos travel to Oakland to battle Jeff George and the Raiders, and that's another one. Oh, oh that's a cage match. And you can, you can, you can throw, you can throw that out, can't you? All records go away. Regional action. Check your local listings for the games in your area. That's NFL and NBC doubleheader tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern time. And stay with us on this must-see weekend on NBC Sports. McKenzie getting the call again. He goes to the 40-yard line. He'll pick up 40 yards on the play. Well, I put McKenzie a really, he's a very interesting young man, and uh, he has a special T-shirt that he wears before and after the ball games. He used to wear it during the ball games, but uh, but not anymore because he is afraid that uh, that it might get torn, and that's in in honor of his brother who has uh, passed away, had Down syndrome. Second down. Fox rolls, throws on the run. The grab is caught. It is R.J. Sowers. He's turning the corner and down the sideline. You mentioned the speed earlier. Oh, he's got three gears down the sideline. 31 yards on the play. Covington and Harper finally get it. Big play, FC. He has averaged 19 yards a catch. This is well done. And the flanker goes in, draws the corner with it, and it's a darn good thing that Ivory Covington has some speed or Soward runs that ball into the end zone. Man, these two teams are like scoring machines. <laughs> Notre Dame's had it twice, scored twice. This is uh, FC's second possession. They're knocking on the door. 
trying to put together a 71-yard drive for a score. First down goal to go, nine-yard line. Here is the pitch outside, coming back inside is McKenzie. Notre Dame is there. A gain of only a yard to the eighth. It'll be second down and goal to go. Lamont Bryant and Bobby Howard got it. Uh, McKenzie is a young man who has, has a personal trainer. His name is Marv Marinovich. Remember Todd yep. Marinovich, the former right? USC yep. quarterback? And McKenzie is probably beat to death by Mark Marinovich in, in his training the way he used to do with uh, Todd. And spinning inside the five is McKenzie down to the three-yard line. It'll be third down and goal to go. And he's a workaholic. I mean, he will lift weights and continue running after practice and is probably in the best shape maybe of anybody in collegiate football. And the other thing about McKenzie, too, is, is that he's listed as a tailback, but at six foot two ten, he's really fullback size. You know, normally, uh, the USC puts quick guys back there, guys like Mike Garrett, Anthony Davis, Charles White, but he's more of a fullback than tailback. Third down goal to go, four wide receivers. Not in time. Uh, uh, Charlie, they got to take this penalty because they've already wasted two timeouts in this first half already. Prior to snap, delay of game, offense, five yard penalty, still third down. If you Notre Dame confused on defense. Okay, John. Go ahead, Dockery. We heard John, John Dockery say something on the side. He said he was good. Notre Dame was confused. Did you see that? Yeah, John, we saw that, but then so was uh, USC. They were very late getting their personnel on the field, which made it appear that that the, the Irish were confused on defense. They're trying to match personnel in this situation. Now back to a stand and set with two wide receivers on the near side. Fox throws in zone, caught touchdown, USC, R.J. Sauer. It is his sixth touchdown of the year, and he pulls within one of Notre Dame. Alan Rossum is the man that he beat. This, this young man is going to beat a lot of people before his career is over. This is a simple square out, not even a play action fake. Notre Dame choice is to blitz there on the goal line, and you see Sauer just run away from the defensive back. And that's one of the things that you just hope you have in a receiver. A guy can accelerate away from coverage. Adam Abrams for the tie. And it is through the uprights. We are tied at 14. USC and Notre Dame. One more look at the score as we step aside. We'll be back with the kickoff in just one moment. R.J. Sauer strikes at Notre Dame. Mobile retailers. By Canon Laser Color, its only competition is reality. By Champion, official outfitter of Notre Dame football. And by Aetna Retirement Services, built for retirement, managed for life. Coming into this ballgame, R.J. Sauer has scored a touchdown every 6.6 .6 times that he had touched the football. Well, he's ahead of that. He's touched it four That's times and he scored. <laughs> This young man is just 19 years old. We're not talking about a college senior. We're, we're talking about a young man who likes to hang around Keyshawn Johnson. He'll make yourself confident, if nothing else. Wants to own his own record label. Plays the piano. He's a great musician. And here's the kickoff. Alan Rossum moves the deep back. This is taken by one of the young backs on the return. Is that Tony Dreyer? Yeah, it is Tony Dreyer. And remember, Tony, he was the deep back before and now he's off on the corner and he returns it for 30 yards on the play. Tonight on NBC it's more of a must-see weekend and what a weekend this is on NBC. Game one of the World Series, 7.30 Eastern time 4.30 Pacific as Dave Justice and the American League champion Cleveland Indians battle Bobby Bonilla and the National League champion Florida Marlins. Game one, World Series tonight at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific here on NBC. The World Series in Florida. <laughs> Did you ever think that would come to pass? No, only spring training. Yeah, only Florida. spring training. Yeah. <laughs> All those now people. they have both ends of the spectrum, yeah. beginning and the end. Uh, Deke Cooper being attended to on the sideline. He was on that kickoff return. Bob 
Davey, the head coach of the Irish. Ball game tied at 14. Notre Dame will start from their own 40-yard line first down. Huge hole over the right side for Clement Stowe. The senior from Washington, D.C., he goes out to the 48-yard line, second and two. Mark Cazano of SC makes the tackle. Uh, he had 100 yards, 109 yards rushing uh, last week against Pittsburgh. He was ineligible in 1996. Bob Davies said that he earned his way back into the starting lineup, as you see. The average yards per play, 7, 8, 6, 9. This is like a Western Athletic Conference football game to this point, Charlie. Jamie Spitzer and Clement Stokes are the running backs now for Notre Dame. Play action fake by Fallis, buys some time, goes into man coverage, and the pass is caught. Outstanding reception by Rakai Nelson. Richard Cook was draped all over him. Actually, I think that went through Cook's hands to get to Rakai Nelson. 18 yards on the play, first down, SC 34. Here it is. Nelson in the slot. This ball is, kind of floats out there. It does go through Cook's hands into Rakai Nelson's hands. For Southern California, I don't, I'm not sure why Ron Paulus could not put a little more steam on that, but to, to think that the receiver can catch it and the defender not intercept it, rather remarkable. Double tight end on this offensive set. And back to the ground game. On the right side is Clement Stokes. Stokes goes to the 30-yard line. Charlie, uh, Bob Davey told us, as I said earlier, he was ineligible in 1996, sat out the entire year. You get a second chance at Notre Dame. And Bob Davey said because of his outstanding play on special teams to this point in the season, he deserved a chance to carry the ball a little bit. And last week, 15 carries, 109 yards. That's more carries than he's had his in, in his entire career. Second down and six. back through is Jamie Spencer, the fullback, at 6'1", 250 pounds. He takes Marge Ma uh, Mark Maddock with him, the junior from Salinas, who brings him down for SC. Uh, this was against Pittsburgh. Uh, USC is not Pittsburgh, but 6.7, 7.3, 6.3 yards a carry will win you a lot of football games at every level. That's something that the uh, Notre Dame Irish have not been able to do at this point in the season, except against Pittsburgh last weekend. Third down and four at the SC 28-yard line. Jamie Spencer is the remaining back. Three wide receivers on the set. Getra, the speedy freshman, is in. Pass is incomplete to Bobby Brown as he cut to the far side. Antoine Simmons had the coverage. Paulus did have time to throw, just overthrown. Slightly. Fourth down and four. From the 35-yard line, a 45-yard field goal attempt by Jim Sampson. Hunter Smith will hold. John Spickelmeyer is the snapper. This is equal to the best distance that he has had this year. From 45 yards away, it is no good. It is no good from 45 yards out, and we remain tied at 14. With 9.46, that is the time remaining in the second quarter. SC and Notre Dame. We're going to step aside. We'll be back on this gorgeous afternoon here at Notre Dame. Don't go away. This is a great one. 14, Notre Dame 14. The missed field goal, the first time that one or the other team on offense has not scored in the ball game. But one of the key matchups is between R.J. Sauer, number 18 of USC, and 15, Alan Rawson of Notre Dame. And they are matched up on the far side. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Malifo McKenzie gets the call, and Brad Williams stops him after a gain of a yard on the play. Actually, big game for Brad Williams from the Southern California area. Went to a lot of USC games as a kid. What did he tell us yesterday? He was thought he was more of a basketball player than a football player. Yeah, and then all of it until all of a sudden he became 250 pounds. Yeah, that'll certainly change your mind. <laughs> he said this is a pride game. Like you mentioned, you know, he knows uh, so many kids from the other team that he played for and against. Yeah. Overflow. 
Coming off of the fake Antoine Harris, the intended receiver. And Devron Harper had the coverage. Let's go down to John Dockery. You know, Charlie, for most of this game, the two best football players on the field were going head-to-head. -head. You mentioned it, uh, R.J. Soward for the um, Trojans and Alan Rossum, the cornerback for the Irish. You know what? Something about Rossum just doesn't strike me as right in his psyche. I played cornerback for a lot of years. On that last Irish kickoff, he deferred. He let Tony Driver take it. He also was not covering Soward on that last play, nor is he covering him now. I'm wondering about the psyche of Alan Rossum at the moment. Third down and nine. Quick five-step drop, setting the screen left side, way under throws the screen, but he's got a lot of pressure with Lamont Bryant right in his face. Sermon's the intended receiver. Good blitz here called by Notre Dame to put pressure. The four-man rush, then you see it's read quickly, very quickly by Notre Dame. 53, Lamont Bryant was right in the quarterback's face. There was no chance for that play to work. Jim Wren will be cooking to, uh, kicking to Allen Rossum. Remember Rossum, the opening kickoff had a 55-yard return. Oh, terrible kick. Hits it low, takes an SC roll, goes inside the 40 to the 38-yard line of Notre Dame. 34 yards on the kick by Jim Wren, who's been averaging 43 and a half yards a kick. He is a senior. Last year's average was 45-6. He is supposed to be one of the best in the nation. Here is a snap as we take another look. It, he hit it fat. His toe dragged on the turf. Let's go back to that missed kick. Yeah, watch both of his feet. Jim Wren, an experienced punter, watch his left foot right on this step. It drags. And then his kicking foot, look at the divot he takes. Hmm. He's lucky to have made contact with that football at all, Charlie. Notre Dame from their own 38-yard line. Ball is the quarterback. Here is Denson to the right side, starring in the first touchdown drive. Casanzo, uh, Mark Casano, the junior from Colony, Texas, makes the stop. At the end of the ball game, Bob and I will be selecting the Chevrolet Scholarship Program Players of the Game that we will announce as money will be awarded to both schools. Uh, a couple of obvious choices to this yes, point. Yes, so far. Audrey, Audrey Denson and R.J. Sauer. Not unexpected, no, though, at this Pretty point. easy choices. Second down. Denson to the left side. This time he is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Sultan Abdemalik, the freshman from Arcadia, was there, number 44. Uh, Charlie, th this... Uh, the USC defense is normally a very active defense. They give you a lot of different fronts, different looks, and they make the offense adjust at the last possible second. But since uh, Notre Dame has run the ball so efficiently in this first half, the uh, USC defense kind of anchored in that base four, three set. Third down and five. Three wide receivers. Paulus has pressure and it's knocked away. Cedric Jefferson, the senior from Fort Worth, knocked it away. He said, Cedric told us, this game against Notre Dame, we'll play it in a parking lot. Let's get it on. Well, I think they prefer grass. <laughs> Crossing pattern run by Notre Dame. Some pressure up front. And 97 is there. 44 is also there. Abdul Malik, a good pressure right in the face. Cedric Jefferson is the player that knocked it down. So Hunter Smith will be kicking. He has a 43.2 yard average. R.J. Soward is the return man for USC. Where's the sideline? Pressure, good kick. High floater, flag is down. Soward takes it at the 10. Slips a tackle, has a left return on, and goes out of bounds near the 25 yard line. Marker back at the 33 yard line. That's going to be a roughing the Hunter flag, but there's also one on the sideline after the run. And here is the snap. USC was definitely coming after this uh, kick. And Dalen McCutcheon right up the middle, number one, runs right into Hunter Smith. Gets a piece of him. And uh, no question about that flag. McCutcheon trying to make the big play. That is contact. But then after the punt was received on the sideline, there is an additional flag. We'll see what happens and who that's on. And Jason Steen was involved in that melee along the near sideline in front of the Notre Dame bench. Both 
penalties going against the University of Southern California. The second was a personal foul. The first one was for running into the kicker. Yeah, now for running into the kicker, it's a, I believe that's a, that's a first down. John Robinson is saying, Robinson is saying that's after the play. During the play, we have interference, five-yard penalty on the defense, first down. But I don't know why running into the kicker doesn't take precedent. Well, they're adding, they're taking both of them. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Notre Dame keeps the ball. The uh, interference penalty is added on, then running into the kicker. So it's going to end up being something like a 25 or 30 yard penalty against USC. It goes to the 36 yard line of USC. And in addition, remember that was third down. That was a kicking situation where SC would have had the football. So rather than SC and the football at their own 30 yard line, Notre Dame retains possession at the 36 yard line of USC in the first down. Two very costly penalties against the Trojans. The second one, of course, the dead ball foul after the play was over. Paulus sets. Here runs the option and the pitch outside to Andre Denson down the line. Shades of Lou Holtz. We haven't seen that this year. And Taylor McCutcheon moves up from corner to make the stop. Well, they're trying any way they possibly can to get the ball to Audrey Denson in different looks. That's a long pitch. Good lead blocking again. Nice block by 88 Bobby Brown out in front. It uh, picks up eight, nine yards, and he's basically been the running game for Notre Dame. His 15th carry now, 87 yards and a touchdown. Second down and two. Denson again. Breaks it clean. The last man who had a shot got him. That was Richard Cook, the strong safety. Charlie again, a nice little trap by the offensive line, trying to pop Denson through the line of scrimmage as quick as possible. Again, watch the, the job of the guys up front. 71 does an excellent job on the pull. That's Wisney. And you've got uh, Audrey Denson, the featured back today. The first back through is Ken Berry, the fullback. He will go to the 17-yard line, maybe the 16, where he will serve back once again by Cook. It's going to be second down. Charlie, we have certainly seen a display by both offenses here of power football. Back in the 70s, this is the way both of these football teams play. Just absolutely drop heavy rocks on you on every snap. Toledo, Toledo realizes the strength of this offense is the upfront guys and Denson get it to him as many times as possible. Second five, 17 yard line. Here is Denson to the near side. Excellent defense by the Trojans, led by Mike Cassano and Chris Claiborne. Claiborne, the sophomore from Riverside, number 55, in his 18th straight start, he has started every game. And Charlie, that's the first time that I remember calling Claiborne's number. You're right. 55, where's that number made famous by Junior Seau, Willie McGinnis? It's the number he wanted, wanted is uh, willing to wear it, wants to live up to both of those previous USC standout linebackers, but Notre Dame did a pretty good job of neutralizing him. Actually, he wanted to wear number three. He said, I want to make my own famous. And they said, no, you're wearing 55, son. <laughs> All right, Paulus. All the time in the world. Underneath the cover pass is complete to Clement Stone. The protection was great, and FC had good coverage downfield. Yeah, but good to go to the end zone. But, Charlie, you know what Clement Stone did? He slowed down. If he would just had, if he had just kept running, it just shows a lack of experience. And you're going to see the crossing route come across here. And if he just keeps running, there he comes right through the middle. See the way he slows down? If he had just kept accelerating, uh, I think the, he would have been led, he would have had some momentum, and picked up the first down. Samson will attempt a 34-yard field goal. He has missed from 45 in the ball game, And this one is off to the right, and it is no good. So Jim Samson has missed from 45 yards out, from 34 yards out. We remain tied at 14. We'll be back with 447 left in the first half.
ever think of driving an Oldsmobile? You will. The Oldsmobile Cutlass. Totally rethought. Ready? Hey! Oh, how much for that? Oh. Ten million. What? Two contracts? You got, you got man, you man. Get the train. Oh. Uh, all right. Uh, take care of yourself and call us. Everything okay? Now he's going to France to study painting. I thought he was into photography. Well, now he wants to be Monet. Last year, a nice tea business, now this. I mean, why can't he find one thing and stick to it? Well, he is your dad. At Aetna Retirement Services, we not only help you build assets, but manage them as well. Build for retirement, manage for life. Next Saturday, Ron Paulus and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame renew their rivalry with the Boston College Eagles. Next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern on NBC. Jim Sanson 0 for 2 today, missing from 45 and from 34 yards coming into the ball game. He had hit 4 of 6, his longest being 45. FC now from the own 20-yard line. Ball game tied at 14. Fox low play action, set throws right side. And it is incomplete as he misses R.J. Sauer. And Sauer has some room over there. A big cushion allowed by Alan Rossum. Uh, here's the matchup. John Dockery talked about it, and maybe the mindset of Alan Rossum that is very soft coverage by Rossum, making sure that Soward does not get past him. Doc, go ahead. Soward is, has unbelievable speed, and you can see Rossum, his psyche, giving him all that room you talked about. It. I think he's a little intimidated by Soward. Meanwhile, John Fox has missed on his last three passes. He hands off this time to Ron Washington, who's brought down by Lamont Bryant. Ball still at the 20-yard line. It'll be third down and 10. He'll have to throw again. And, you know, actually, I'm kind of surprised at, at, at the soft coverage by Alan Rossum. Remember we talked to Rossum yesterday? He had all the confidence in the world. Absolutely. Oh. Comes from a family of eight. He's got 12 people here from his hometown watching. Rossum is one of those... He's a very intelligent kid, worked for the uh, state of Indiana government in a, uh, in a little program last summer. It, it's not like him to back off of the receiver, no matter who that person is. Said he doesn't worry about failure. Said he had bad performance. It, it will build your, per build your perseverance. Long pass. There is bumping downfield. They're going to call it unintentional. R.J. Sauer, the intended receiver. He collided with Ivory Covington, and they rule it just an incomplete pass. And you see Covington kind of gives him the inside-outside look, and then they're both looking back at the football, and I don't know who you'd fault. No, you don't. You so don't. there's no reason to call the flag, right. to throw the flag. Right. Equal right to the football. Rossum now, the return man for Jim Rim. And Rim, of course, with that, off, that awful kick a moment ago. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. That's when sale. Taking the 31-yard line, sticks the tackle. Second Trojan will get him, though. At the 37-yard line where contact is made, there was Bob Aubrey, 48 yards on the kick, a six-yard return. We are tied at 14. Here's the time remaining in the first half. SC and Notre Dame tied at 14. Ron Paulus, 5 of 7, 69 yards. As he directs the offense of the Irish from their own 36-yard line. Joey Gethrell, the freshman from Hacienda Heights. He reverses his field and is upended at the 35-yard line. So a lot of action and very little results for the freshman. He was fun to talk to, though, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, but this was well diagnosed by uh, USC. No chance for Gethrell whatsoever to get outside. An excellent job done by the uh, defensive end. George, George Perry, get throw with that great speed, tries to reverse his field, and uh, Dalen McCutcheon there to make the tackle. 
Second down and 12. It did not work at all, did it? Gets her off from Bishop Amont in La Fuente. And last year was playing high school football where he led the state of California with a receiving average of more than 24 yards. As Kenbury, the fullback, spins his way to the 40-yard line as we spin down to the sideline in John Dockery. You know what, Charlie and Chuck, I want to ask a question. You remember beginning of this game, Notre Dame was using a lot of motion on offense. We listened in on the sideline in USC. They didn't react at all. They finally figured out some adjustments, and they were starting to react. But Notre Dame has not come back to motion whatsoever. I don't know, Trump. Maybe they feel they just don't need it for their ground game, but I'm a little surprised. Uh, I think they do need it for their ground game, Doc. I think that's an excellent point to make. From the shotgun. Wallace sends everybody out. It's pretty good protection. Pass is complete over the middle. It is Johnson who slips the tackle, and he's going to pick up the first down. 13 yards on the play, and Dalen McCutcheon makes the tackle. Uh, this is one of the things that Notre Dame wanted to feature uh, against the USC defense. Try to get as many crossing patterns as possible. Now, Brian Kelly is there. You also see Cazano is there. But the crossing pattern, catch the ball in traffic, well thrown by Paulus, first down pickup. 46-yard line of SC, two minutes left to go in the first half. Ball game tied at 14. SC may have been offside, a little play action fake. Three down, going deep into the coverage, and it is incomplete. Rakai Nelson, the intended receiver, but SC was in the neutral zone. I believe it was uh, Sultan Abdumalik. Offside's called against the Trojans. Now he's right down here. He's looking right at the football. And he goes offside on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. To this point, USC, USC has given Notre Dame several other opportunities on that uh, punt when they ran into the punter and now... And the personal foul. And the personal foul. And now a dumb little penalty here makes it first and five at the 41-yard line. SC and Notre Dame both have been penalized a total of 82 yards. Here's Dixon to the right side. Slides down the line, tries to get the corner. And he'll pick up some of it. Most, most of the five yards for the first down. Let's see where they mark him out. Brian Kelly, the senior from Denver, played at Oberlin High School, takes him out of bounds. And also Chris Claiborne, 55, was out there. And the young man who uh, we've spoken about earlier. I think he could play fullback. I think he could play tight end. I think he could land him just about anywhere you want him to, and he could play. First down, 35-yard line. Claiborne, by the way, was recruited by Notre Dame. He came back and said, yeah, let's get cold back there. <laughs> Here's Audrey Denson inside the 30-yard line. He'll ramble for about eight more yards as he approaches the century mark. And Paulus takes a timeout. He has crossed the century mark, 19 carries, 104 yards, 104 yards rushing and a touchdown for Austria Denson. We have a timeout. Coming up at halftime, a full report on the World Series from Hannah Storm and Keith Oberman as game one approaches tonight. So be sure and stay with us on this must-see weekend on NBC Sports. Plus, they'll also preview the NFL doubleheader on NBC tomorrow. Jacksonville, Mark Brunel will chat with Sam Weich about the Jaguars' big game with the Cowboys. We'll hear from John Elway as he and the Broncos prep for their arch rivals, the Oakland Raiders. Plus, Greg Gumbel and Chris Collinsworth will have their opinions, and they do have their opinions, on tomorrow's <laughs> NFL slate, as well as a full roundup of today's college highlights. So stay with us for an action-packed half halftime. Boy, I hope they get all that in in 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> let's see now let's take some inventory 129 to go in the half uh, Notre Dame has two timeouts just burned one uh, ball at the uh, 26 yard line second down and about what three or four Charlie second down and two there's a lot available here for uh, Notre Dame now USC likes the blitz and I think in this situation, a blitz is a good call here. It's something to, to disrupt this drive, something to uh, kind of slow down the momentum a, a little bit here. Uh, one other comment. 19 carries by Audrey Denson in the first half of this game is entirely too many. You do not want to use that young man up. And he's coming close to the point of being overused in this first half. Second down and two, and he is the tailback. Paula 
goes to throw. Goes to the end zone. They're going to call pass interference. Good call. They'll call it on Richard Cook. Rakai Nelson, the intended receiver. Charlie, single coverage. Wallace puts this ball up so that Nelson can run over it. There you see the left hand on the shoulder patch. Two officials through the flag. Never not turned one. around and looked. Yeah. Not one. And he's not looking at all. Not on the play away. Have. Interference is on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. The previous spot being the 27-yard line. Now, Paul is to the sideline to talk to Bob Davey here. Bob Davey is the head coach and more defensive-minded, but again, he's giving him strategy. This is what you got. Two timeouts left. You know the automatic play. And the ball at the 12-yard line, first down. Nelson coming wide to the near side. The slot back is inside of him. And here is Nelson. Just a couple of yards to the 10. It'll be second down and eight at the FC 10-yard line. Now his 20th carry on the half. And with the field goal kicker already have missing twice. I don't know that Bob Davey wants to take any chance with a field goal. He wants his ball in the end zone for sure points. And we have exactly one minute to go in the first half. Bobby Brown comes wide to the near side. to throw. Oh, tipped at the line of scrimmage. Nice defensive play for USC. It may have been Mark Maddock that got his hands up. 6'5", 280 pounder. Bobby Brown, the intended receiver. Yeah, Maddock getting his hand up. Very fortunate. I think Maddock is right here and he gets his hand up. The receiver was wide open. Yeah, how about that for luck? Three wide receivers for Notre Dame. Third down and eight, 46 seconds left. From the shotgun. Wallace keeps both backs in, they flare. At the six yard line, it is incomplete. It will be fourth down. Now, what do you do? Well, he's going to send Samson back out there for the middle of the shot. Cassano and Gibson had the coverage on Johnson. Sansom has missed from the 40 from 45 yards out and from 34 yards out. Notre Dame had three kickers at the beginning of the season. He said they were all about even. And he would select one and Bob Davey picked Jim Sampson. SC is going to let him think about it. Well, he doesn't have it. I remember one of, one of the kickers said that when they do that, he said, oh, he said, what do you think about it? He said, oh, I think about what I'm going to do after the ball. Uh, game. I, I, don't, I don't think so. <laughs> what he's got to think about is two very bad misses. Hooked one, shanked the other one. Overcompensated. Yep. Now what do you do with this one? You try, well, it's, it's like, a, it's like a, a golfer, though. Isn't it? You have to take every the previous shot out of your mind. The three putt, you've got to forget it at the next tee. Hard yeah, but, to do. But, well, but see, the problem with kickers is only other kickers come around you after you miss. Uh, everybody else on the team would just as soon uh, uh, get you a bus ticket out of town. That, that, that's how separate kickers are from the rest of the football team. And as he walks on the field, you'll see he's by himself. His lone friend out there will be Hunter Smith, who is the holder. And that's only because that's Hunter's job. <laughs> You know, every, and are you telling me that hey, here's the here's the huddle and he's over to the side. Sure, You're right, sure. Nobody's talking to him. Yeah. Huh? It, but it's not just him. It, it's all, all kickers. kickers. Some guys like that lonely feeling. When you miss, you really get that lonely feeling. You better like it. <laughs> this one will be from 27 yards away to break the 14-14 tie. And this one is dead solid perfect. And Charlie, he took a little more time on that one. Did you see that? Mm. The first two he rushed. That one, there was just a slight hesitation. And then hammered it through. This is a very strong kick, but watch how he delays just a second. Ball down, good form, right through. Well, now I'm a hero. I'm one for three. They love me. And they'll all talk to me on the sideline. Right. If I go one for four, they don't like me again. 
selection of Notre Dame head coach Bob Davey with 37 seconds left to go in the second quarter. Notre Dame moves on top by a score of 17 14. And John Robinson on the sideline consulting with Keith Burns the defensive coordinator there. And John never stops coaching. He's one of those 24 hour a day coaches trying to get the team better teaching them how to be adults. Delon Washington and David McCutcheon are the deep backs. Are they hiding R.J. Soward somewhere or is no. he going to be on the side? <laughs> he is not out there. Oh, I thought they'd be hiding him somewhere. And you can't change numbers. That is Dalen McCutcheon. He's no he's no slouch though at returning kicks now. Yeah, we do have a report now on R.J. Soward that he does have a groin injury. And he is on the far sideline where they are working with him. And this one is high and short as they use the sideline. It will go out of bounds. Scott Sinja kicking off for Notre Dame. And be sure to be with us at halftime. As R.J. Sauer now is going into the locker room early. And they're going to be taping up that groin injury. As he is an integral part of the offense of USC. They want to put five seconds back on the clock as the kickoff was not touched in the field of play and went out of bounds. And be sure to stay with us. We have an action-packed halftime. They'll be talking about that World Series game. They'll be uh, updating what's going on in college football. They'll talk about the NBA game that uh, you saw from Paris here on NBC. And, of course, the NFL doubleheader tomorrow as this must-see weekend on NBC Sports continues. But first things first, we have some 37 seconds left here in the first half. See it on 35-yard line. Troy Gardner is in as a wide receiver. And with a straight shot up the middle, that's Delon Washington, the senior from Dallas, who has scored one of SC's two touchdowns. And, and Charlie, I, I make this comment. If Soward is out here and healthy, I think you give it a couple of shots in the end zone. As it is, let's just go in here 17-14, kind of think about things and see what else we can find. Well, a bit of a hurry up offense and going deep to Billy Miller. And it is incomplete as Alan Rossum had the coverage now with 12 seconds left. But you certainly miss that speed of R.J. Sauer. Yes. And uh, Billy Miller, a huge receiver at 6'4", 210. He wears the number, the, wears the number that Keyshawn Johnson made famous at the USC. Rossum almost makes the interception. But if Sauer can't go in the second half, Billy Miller's got to have a big second half. And he is, he is not the speed threat that Sauer is. Won't get the respect that Sauer has gotten from the Notre Dame defensive backs. Third down and three. Fox, two-step drop, misses the intended receiver. Going to Troy Garner, the freshman from Notre Dame High School in North Hollywood. Fox has that tendency. You know, he's, he's a young quarterback. There's a tendency to uh, forget that fact. Prior to this year, he only had 10 snaps and two passes prior to this year. So he's had these ups and downs, and sometimes he gets a little bit flustered and wants to hurry it up a little bit. Yeah, more. I, I don't want to make it worse, but of his two passes he threw last year, one was intercepted, too. So, <laughs> yeah. So he's not loaded with a lot of experience. Jim Wren will be kicking to Allen Rossum. Nine seconds left in the first half. Over Rossum's head as he misjudges it. And it will be touched down at the 14-yard line. As time has run out, it is halftime following that 44-yard kick. Notre Dame on top of USC by a score of 17 to 14. John Dockery. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, coach, you started off real strong, and then things seem to flatten out a little bit. What happened? I don't think so, John. Uh, we started out well on offense. We moved the ball. Uh, we didn't play particularly well on defense, but I thought our defense played well in the second half. Um, unfortunately, we missed the two field goals, but you know, I don't think we flattened out. We started out good, and I thought we played a good, solid first half. We'd like to have more points right now, but I think we're playing pretty well. 
I thought on defense you made some adjustments. You put an extra defensive lineman in to shut down their run? Not really. Uh, it's what critical is us is getting off the field on third down. The first two series when they went in and scored, they had several third down conversions that they were able to convert. So the key for us right now is not so much stopping the run. It's getting off the field on third down. Well, thank you, Coach. Good luck. All right, thank you, John. Halftime here at Notre Dame Stadium. The Irish are out in front of SC by 3, 17 to 14. As we switch our attention to New York and Greg Gumbel. All right. It does, but we obviously need him in the second half. Stopping the Irish running game has also been a problem. Any adjustments made? I certainly hope so. We made some. I hope they work. Uh, this game's up for grabs, you know. I mean, anybody that can come out and seize the initiative and get some things working. Uh, for us, I think it has to be mixture, run, and pass, and uh, probably the same for them. You get the ball in the second half. Good luck. Okay, thanks. And there is R.J. Sauer, and he's been kind of dancing around and uh, looks as if he's all right. Seize the initiative is what John Robinson said, and I think that becomes the key to whoever, whoever is going to win this football game. And frankly, Charlie, the, the fact that Sauer did not have a pulled groin muscle, but cramps is a huge part of SC's success because at least the threat is yeah. there, and it'll soften the coverage a little bit so uh, USC can function. I agree with John Robinson that the, the game is still up for grabs. All right, now Notre Dame side, now they have really been, Autry Denson has run the carry about 20 times in the first half he's been averaging 21 carries a game now you mentioned that they're starting to use him up yeah have they used him up well I don't know but I, I think this is on the final lap of what Autry Denson can uh, produce for uh, Notre Dame so we saw Clement Stokes at the end of the first half he's uh, Denson's backup was a hundred yard rusher uh, last weekend and if he's not healthy and it's again all in the hands of Autry Denson you are really stretching this young man first half stats you look at the rushing numbers for Notre Dame 139 yards that's control the kind of control that both coaches would love to have on a regular basis no turnovers Total yards 221 to 165. The only negative for Notre Dame is the two missed field goals. And the only negative for USC comes back as a positive. It looks like uh, Soward is going to be able to play in the second half, although he's not back on the kickoff return. And uh, the report on Clement Stokes is that he was kicked in the shin in the first half and he'll be able to play in the second half. All right, FC will have their first opportunity to have the football in the second half with Delon Washington and Dalen McCutcheon. As the deep backs, again, it's a short kick and it is taken by McKenzie. The life of McKenzie, a flag is down, another flag covers it, and a third flag comes in. Meanwhile, the ball is dead at about the 30-yard line. We'll check out all these flags. Well, legal block in the back, so you uh, mark off 15 yards, and again, USC is going to start with poor field position to begin this second half. Clement Stokes made the tackle on the special team for return, Notre Dame. We have an illegal block in the back above the waist. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. I think that's the play, but, you know, in defense of, of number 15, Junior Rickman, he started legal. He had his hands in front of the guy, and then he turned around. But and that happens so often in the officials. They turn into yes. the play, and they see you after the turn has been made. John Fox, the quarterback of USC, ended the first half with six straight incompletions. And SC will start at their own 16-yard line, first down. The line Washington swarmed under after a gain of about a yard. is going to be second down and nine. First half possessions for... Uh, USC started strong, uh, 23 plays, 14 points, and then three downs and out, three straight times. And I think that's the concern for, for John Robinson and his group. Last week against Arizona State, they did absolutely nothing offensively or defensively in the second half. So he, he's right, the game is still up for grabs, but this first drive is key for USC. And their first opportunity to see the initiative that John Robinson was talking about. Play action fake has pressure. Throws back in underneath the coverage. Ty Asinda, the uh, freshman from uh, Valencia, the fullback. Bobby Howard was right there. But meanwhile, Lamont Brandt was all over John Fox. And Charlie, in the first half, if you just tuned in, you're going to see, look at the first 23 plays for USC, 158 yards, two touchdowns. Last 10, just eight yards. The Notre Dame defense did an excellent job, but then USC really didn't help themselves. They made a lot of dumb mistakes. Third down and five. 
a juggling reception and is going to be shy of the first down. They'll mark it at the point of the reception. It'll be about the 25-yard line. Antoine Harris, the freshman tight end at 6'4", 220 pounds, has still another one, but he was wrapped up by Bobby Howard, maybe close enough for a measurement. And that is a freshman mistake. And John Robinson shaking his head. One more stride. The kid's 6'4". One more stride, and it's an easy first down pickup. And as a former tight end, how do you make that one more stride with somebody hanging on you? Well, you count five as opposed to four, <laughs> but they do get the first down. Right. And on this, you count ten because it's first down. Right. <laughs> so mark it at the 26-yard line, the spot of the catch, and it's a first down as SC converts on third down and five. <laughs> R.J. Soward goes wide to the far side. Billy Miller is, is wide to the near side. Fox a little play action. He goes deep to Soward and overthrows him. Ivory Covington had the coverage. He had him beat. Well, but now, Charlie, what Fox, the quarterback, cannot do, here's the matchup. This is Ivory Covington in coverage. They can't force the ball into Soward. You, you're going to... There's no question that Notre Dame certainly respects his speed and ability, but you have to set up Soward to uh, make him effective. In the first half, they did, and he, uh, he seems fine to this point. Soward's in the slot on this side. Rodney Sermon's a wide receiver to the far side, and Miller's on the near side. The pass is low, 31-yard line to Billy Miller. He has it. It'll go for a gain of five. And a quarterback comparison. Uh, both very, very good. Six of ten for Paulus. John Fox, six of 13. Match yards. The one touchdown to Soward, which was a beautiful throw and catch. And he needs uh, Fox and the USC Trojans need a big third down conversion here. Third down and four. They converted on third down and five going to their tight end, Antoine Harris. Let's see if they go back to the same well. is trapped. He's down. Dropped to the 27-yard line. Corey Miner. And Corey, no, it was Corey Bennett, number 95, who got him. Well, Lamont Bryan trying to uh, draw the offensive tackle. Offsides, he stayed right in his stance. Bennett, they run a little twist up front. And 95 right in the face of uh, Fox. So the first sack of the day for either team. Second sack this season for Corey Bennett. Benny Gilbo being helped to the near sideline for Notre Dame as he was shaken up on the play, number two. Audrey Denson is the return man. Jim Wren who struggled with his kicking game. Oh, here's a beauty. Whoa, oh, big time. Taken back at the 23-yard line. A flag is down. That's an illegal block in the back by number one, Deke Cooper. 50 yards on that kick. Flag down. Flag dropped at the 23-yard line. Anthony Bolson, the senior from Merced, had the coverage for USC, and he was down in a hurry also on the kick. Punching on the tackle. And here is Denson, and there is the push from the back. And the flag will be dropped as Bolson goes down. Not a difficult call to make, is it? No, not at all. Let's see, though. We have an illegal block in the back during the return. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the ball. First down. They'll place it back at the 13-yard line where Notre Dame will move on offense for the first time in the second half when we come back. The Irish lead by three. Notre Dame Stadium, the... The crowd very enthusiastic as always here. 11.57, time remaining third quarter. Notre Dame with the football. They lead 17-14. Tim Ritter is in at tight end, number 89. He's also an offensive lineman, and that means they're going to run the football. That is no surprise. And it's Audrey Denson, also no surprise. Gain of a couple yards to the 15. And let's see what Notre Dame did in the first half. Uh, you see the number of plays there, I think, is the, the most important thing. They got the 34, 39 plays run in the first half. That's controlling the ball. Uh, the two missed field goals, I mean, they had uh, five scoring opportunities, made good on three. How did you add that up so quickly? I'm going, what is Sorry, told me in my ear. I cannot take credit for it. <laughs> I thought, boy, that's quick. 
Second down and eight. Well, that's a little play action fake. Rolling to the right. He throws it away. He was out of real estate, out of time, and his receivers recovered. Jabari Holloway, the freshman tight end, would have been the closest man there. Sultan uh, Abdumalik was chasing him. Uh, excellent coverage by USC downfield. They're uh, kind of a two tight end formation and a two tight end pattern. And uh, no one was open. Notre Dame's two of six on third down conversions. Denson 108 yards. The USC in mass 80 yards rush. Third down and eight at the 15. From the shotgun with three wide receivers. Both backs will flare. Deep over the middle. Juggling reception. Bounced it off the ground. It is incomplete. Oh, I was there until he had it. Bobby Brown. He is a sub-47, 400-meter runner, so he has the speed, but the hands weren't there. Yeah, this this was a, uh, a minute 400-meter catch because the ball is right there. There's no reason, no excuse not to catch that one. That would have been a big third-down conversion for Notre Dame. Four straight incompletions now for Ron Pollitt. Chad Morton with a bit of a hip injury is the return man for USC, and Hunter Smith is going to kick it away. Pretty good kick. Taken back at the 26-yard line. A flag drops. May have been a face mask. The return to the 35. 57 yards on the kick and a seven-yard return. Bob? I think it's going to be on USC. So, again, penalty on a punt. Yeah, illegal block in the back. That's two punts, two illegal blocks in the back. One for Notre Dame, one for USC. All the people be covered 60 yards. USC During the return, we have a block in the back against the returning team. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, they call it on Bob Aubrey, number 40, right there. That's pretty obvious on Clement Stokes. As we'll step aside with 10.54 left to go, we're in the third quarter. Petros Papadakis is in now as the tailback for USC. Wearing number 35, and that is his brother's, uh, Tasu's number. He had his knee blown out. His brother got married last weekend. And also is one of the characters at Disneyland. We can't tell you which one because it's a big secret. <laughs> and we have whistles blowing as Papadakis gets the call. The family, of course, is a great restaurant in San Pedro. And boy, are they SC fans. Whoa. Prior to the snap, we have a false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. SC special teams 40 yards in four penalties, and now another penalty against the Trojans. Yeah. Well, Papadakis leaving the field, I was just going to say, they got a big contingent of Papadakai. Yeah, here in the South Bend, oh, a yeah. whole bunch of the family showed up here. And they always show up at the restaurant, too, and he, oh. he said, I don't like to go there because he said, I was on the ball club for one day, and they said, when are you starting? When are you starting? Box to throw. Here's the screen. The screen is complete to the line of Washington. And Washington gets almost all of it back. He picks up 12 yards. They still need three more for the first down. Corey Miner makes the tackle. Now, Charlie, part of that, you're going to see the, the screen set up here. Part of this is set up by the uh, respect that's being paid to Soward and the tight end. Everybody kind of looks over to the right. Excellent blocking out in front. And uh, a big pickup, but it still brings up a second down, but it makes up for that penalty. Second down and three. Off to McKenzie. He picks up about a yard on the play, so it's going to be third down and still a couple to go for the first down. Now, this is about the way USC started the game. Very conservative, trying to at least grab some control of the line of scrimmage. Do nothing real fancy. Hang on to the football. We haven't had a turnover by either team at this point in the game. And put some trust in your offensive line. 
McKenzie for FC has 37 yards rushing in 10 plays, and they show four wide receivers. And a straight shot up the middle by Rodney Sermons will pick up the first down at the 35-yard line. Come on, Bryant makes the tackle. Uh, that's something you're seeing a great deal of in college football. Spread the defense and then run the dive. And all your offensive linemen have to do is, is just make contact and maintain contact. And most teams can pick up that first down. McKenzie and Ayacinda are the two running backs for USC, and we've got whistles across the field. Nine minutes and 20 seconds, time remaining. We're in the third quarter. The shadow's completely now covering the field here at Notre Dame. SC still on the sun side. If SC is seizing the moment in this drive, they're doing it very slowly. Yeah, yeah. got a baby step. That's right. right. But, but time of possession, control of the ball is probably at this point most important. First down, Fox to throw. He goes deep and overthrows everybody. Completely overthrows everybody. Yeah, and you know what? I was going to say that the inexperience of Devron Harper, the free safety, you're going to see him coming in the picture down here. He is so concerned with the receiver, he doesn't look back at the football. He can go for the interception right there, but he is looking to make sure that he makes the hit on Soward. And again, that's just inexperience. This is just his third start at free safety. Second down and 10, time of possession just about even. SC has held it thus far nine seconds more than Notre Dame. Jumping to the near side is McKenzie. McKenzie out to the 44-yard line. A couple of yards shy of the first down. We go down to John Dockery. Charlie, I am surrounded by the men who define the term super fan. Giles Perlin on my right is 90 years old, and you've been to how many games of USC? This is my uh, 781st consecutive game I've seen the Trojans, both home and away. 781. His brother Oliver over here is 86. How many have you been to, Oliver? This is my 582nd. <laughs> You're way behind your brother. After this play, I want to get back. Well, let's, let's continue on here. Um, Giles, what is it about... USC is it USC college football you've been to every single Notre Dame USC game what is it that makes you such a fan well I think it's uh, two reasons I think it, you have something to look forward to each year in other words back in 1926 when I first saw the first USC Notre Dame game I figured that uh, as long as my health was good I'm going to keep on coming and I haven't missed the <laughs> USC Notre Dame game both home and away since how long would you like to go uh, what's your goal my goal is to go to 800 games and figure that I can go to this rest to this year and all of 1998 and half of 1999 and I'll hit my goal of 800. <laughs> Well, good luck to you, and uh, Oliver, good luck to you. I know you're way behind your brother. Just keep enjoying the game. Charlie, back to you. Okay, <laughs> that penalty against USC. Third down and 13. Box to throw. Scrambles out. He can run for it. He needs a block. He has a little bit of a screen block. Has the first down. Decided not to go to the sideline and cut it back. And and Harper may have saved a touchdown. 22 yards on the play. Fox not known as a running quarterback, but there was good coverage down the field. He was very patient here, Charlie. You'd see him looking all over the field. And then he just simply outruns Jimmy Friday to the sideline. Good blocking downfield, 22-yard pickup. And you ask what happened to tailback you? Look. Longest run of the year for USC by the quarterback. Oh. And it's a first down, 44-yard line, Notre Dame. McKenzie getting the call. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10. Nothing fancy here. This is just bread and butter, basic offense run by USC. Tight end formation left. Just push him and shove him. Nice little trap. Actually, Lamont Bryant does an excellent job. The trapper misses him completely, but McKenzie still picks up, what, a foot and a half? That's about all. <laughs> That's about all. He should have been tackled for a loss. Second down and 10. Fox 
play action. Rolling right, biting time. Bump fake, he's going to keep around the corner, down the sideline, and out of bounds. And a flag is going to fly hit out of bounds. They will add that to the end of the run, and FC will have a first down. It is Corey Bennett. And the senior from Doraville, Georgia, should know better than that. Absolutely. you got to know where that sideline is at all times. Absolutely, he should. There have been some of the most obvious penalties I think I've seen in a football game so far yep. today. Tight roping up the sideline, steps out of bounds. Yes, easily. Easily a penalty. But that's now two big runs by John Fox in this drive. Back on the 15-yard penalty. And it's worked. John Fox is now sitting down on the turf. Remember when we talked with John Fox, I think he was just taking a little bit of a breather. Well, he's got a bad ankle. Uh, he's been trying to play with that all season long, and actually they're going with the backup quarterback. That's Mike Van Rampoort. He leads high school, El Cajon, the freshman, 6'5", 220 pounds. He's completed two of three for 23 yards, and that has been it. First down. McKenzie swarmed under for a loss. Back to the 27. It'll be second down and 12. Joe Ferrer of Castleberry, Florida, led the charge for Notre Dame. Here's John Fox on the sideline. Looks like, I can't really tell if there's a trainer there. The yard. And you can, he's trying to, I don't see them retaping his ankle. Remember he told us that uh, growing up, Tom Rathman was his idol. He runs a bit like the fullback and he's got his haircut, yeah. doesn't he? Love Joe Montana, too. Who oh, yeah. Wants to be an elementary school teacher. But most of all, he said, I want to come home happy every day. Not a bad goal. Here's the pitch to McKenzie. McKenzie. I think Notre Dame has said, this kid's not going to throw against us. We'll just shut down the rush. We'll send everybody. I agree with you totally. And it is a uh, tremendous now weakness for uh, USC. I, I think the offensive coordinator, Hugh Jackson, is a little bit afraid to put the ball up there. No turnovers by USC. It eliminates Sauer, number 18. But at third and 10, I don't know that he's got to throw. Yeah. Jimmy Friday, the 13th, made the last tackle for Notre Dame. Here comes the blitz up the middle. It's picked up. Pressure from the backside. Runs, throws along the sideline. Incomplete. Billy Miller went up, went forward, came down with it out of bounds. It is incomplete. He was knocked out of bounds. By Billy Miller. Bullshit! The USC bench is protesting. And Billy Miller, again, that big receiver, 6'4", 210. This is a nice throw by Van Rapport, and there's no question that he is knocked out of bounds. But in college football, that rules it incomplete. Absolutely. Different than the pros. And now for the tie from the 32-yard line. A 42-yard field goal attempt by Adam Abrams. He has hit two of three this year. 42 yards away to tie at 17. If it'll come back, and it does, from 42 yards away, have the Trojans seized the initiative here as they tie Notre Dame at 17. That is his longest this year. Here's one more look. We are tied at 17. We'll be back with the kickoff. We have 5.06 left to go. We're in the third quarter at Notre Dame Stadium. Another classic between these two great college football powers. Welcome back to Notre Dame Stadium. You're taking a look at John Fox. Yeah, you can see where Corey Bennett it just fell right on his ankle. Bennett had his ankle retaped. Now he's running into the locker room, or he's, he's not running in the locker room. He's just stretching his leg on the sideline. It's his right ankle. And his right ankle, he hurt it originally in the Florida State game, their first game. So we're set to go. Adam Rendon will kick off. Alan Rossum, who had a 56-yard kickoff return to open the ball game, is the deep back. He will pull it in at the five-yard line. He has 10, 15, 20, still on his feet. Leans out about 24 yards on the return. Sunday morning, 
Want to know what's happening in the world? Well, then watch Meet the Press, television's longest-running news show that brings you face-to-face -face with today's newsmakers. Join Tom Russert Sunday on Meet the Press. Check your local listings for the time in your area. Notre Dame, now they have they have been changing up that offensive line. What have they been doing? Well, what they've been doing is time of possession in the second half. You can see it's dropped off considerably. What, what they've been doing is, is bringing in kind of a, a, a combination tight end tackle to give them a little help in the running game. Not in there in this particular set. Clement Stokes and Jamie Spencer are the running backs. Here is Stokes off of the left side. He should be a bit fresher than Audrey Denson, who has certainly been carrying the load for Notre Dame. Mark Cassano and Antoine Simmons, the outside linebackers for USC, make the tackle. Charlie, I, I would think that Notre Dame's approach would be the same as USC's. Very conservative here. Why do you want to be conservative here? Well, control the line of scrimmage. Don't do something out of the ordinary. Second down, six. Clement Stokes coming to the near side. Stopped at the 35-yard line. Now, Charlie, this is the formation I was talking about. If you'll notice, here is Pettigrew. He is a tackle. This is Ritter. He has an 80 number, but he's covered by a split end. So they run to basically an unbalanced line, and in the first half, they were very successful. USC has made the adjustment to Pettigrew. It's been a lot more difficult for Notre Dame to pick up the yardage they were getting in the first half. Third down and four. Ball is from the shotgun. And Paulus will be sacked. Aaron Williams gets it for SC. George Perry and Mark Maddock also had a little piece of the action. Now, this is set up by that last play where they didn't gain any yards. Just a four-man rush. They run a twist. Wallace can find nobody downfield. Good containment by members of the USC football team. Abdul Malik was right there to keep uh, Wallace in the pocket, and they come up with a sack. Hunter Smith, his first punt, 61 yards. Chad Morton is the return man. Last year, Morton was a jack of all trades, a tailback. Whoa. Especially, oh, this is a boomer. Whoa. Taken back to the 10 yard line. Five yards on the return. Jen looks for the corner, and then he is bucked out of bounds by Corey Miner. 58 yards, 5-8 on the kick. That was a beauty. Eight yard counter punch, tie ball game back in a moment. John Fox is not in the ball game, but they have not retaped or taped over his ankle. I'm a bit surprised. Charlie, maybe it's an indication that uh, John Robinson's choice here is just keep running the football. They, uh, in the second half here, have established some control of the line of scrimmage. Mike Van Rapport is the quarterback. And then throw. Comes out there, a little swing into the left flat. It's complete to McKenzie. McKenzie out to the 29-yard line again, and nine yards on the play. Well, that was an awful nice throw for a young man who has been sitting on the sideline all afternoon long. Mike Van Rapport's at 6'5", 220. Looks like he's been there forever. Stands tall, good delivery. Delivers it right out in front of McKenzie, so he doesn't have to alter his uh, bat. That's a that's a huge completion. I mean, I just wait a minute. This kid can play too. Now Notre Dame says we got to cover everybody. Second down and one. Straight shot up the middle to McKenzie. Across the 35, 36 yard line, gain of seven. First down. Jimmy Friday with the tackle. Now the momentum has definitely shifted to USC. The twice now Notre Dame has gone out three plays and out and it's just given USC and John Robinson his side of the field just a little feeling of when you know, maybe we can get control of this now. Grant Irons in the game defensively. Delon Washington the tailback. Play action fake on first down. Goes to the far side. Pass is caught. R.J. Soward has it. Ben Rapport's right on target. Allen Rossum with the coverage, and they're talking to each other. Just a simple square out. Watch the hands of Soward. There's a flag. Uh, it's coming back, but this is an awful nice catch. I love the fact that he puts his hands out in front. You know, catch that ball with your hands as best you can, but it's all for naught. There is a flag on USC. 
During the play, we have a hold on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. We'll repeat first down. Penalty takes the ball back to the 17. Yeah, it looks like 71 may have got his arms wrapped around Travis the, Claridge, the uh, defensive end. 95 yards in penalties against USC. That's the 11th time they've been flagged in the ballgame. Mike Van Rappers, you remember his dad, Dick. He was a kicker for the San Diego Chargers. Marvin Powell, the third, and Junior Rickman, double tied in on the set. And Rappers. Slips one tackle across the 22, across the 20 out to the 22. Corey Bennett brings him down at that point. His brother Jeff lettered four years at Arizona State as a record-setting quarterback and was the MVP of the 87 Rose Bowl. Well, Mike on that play showed great strength. Boy, he just shrugged a tackler there and just kept right on going. 6'5", 220. And he has another brother, Bill, junior offensive lineman at San Diego State. An offensive lineman? An off <laughs> How did that happen? Dan Aaron Nick is not that big. <laughs> and then two tall quarterbacks and then an offensive lineman. lineman. Yeah, that's it. Second down and 24. Running out of time. Take a timeout to save the penalty. I'm not sure that was a good decision. What's the difference in second 24 and second and 29? Bob Trumpy says shrug. Well, no, I, th I think it's a, a good idea because if you have the wrong personnel in there, it might be <laughs> second and third. <laughs> <laughs> all right, program note tonight, after your late local news, an all new Saturday Night Live hosted by George's Jungle, Brendan Fraser, and musical guest York. That's all new Saturday Night Live tonight, after your late local news. That's your favorite musical group, isn't it? York? I've never heard of them. Are you I wish I had them. I wish I had them. I had to ask everybody. And it's everybody's favorite. Oh, yes! Nice. Okay. Fine by me. <laughs> they never have Frank Sinatra on that show, do they? <laughs> York, okay. I'll watch just to find I out. I haven't. Listen, I'm going to watch just to find out. I'll give you a report next okay. week. All right. 43 seconds. That is the time remaining in the third quarter in a ball game that is tied 17-17. Meanwhile, John Fox boosting up on the sideline. But meanwhile, Mike Van Rapport is doing a pretty good job. He's doing an excellent job mm -hmm. for standing on the sideline all afternoon long. The screen, it is complete. McKenzie down the sideline, a flag is down. And another flag comes down, 35-yard line. That's on Sauer at 18, illegal block in the back. That was totally unnecessary, too. McKenzie was going to pick up about 9 or 10 yards. Devon Harper there for Notre Dame. Jarvis Edson in the game defensively for Notre Dame. Here's 18. Watch right up there. There's the block in the back. It's on Devron Harper right in front of the official. Also right in front of John Robinson. Here's Robinson. Watch his reaction. Oh, come and on. He, and actually, he, he, he blocked him into the ball game. One of the things, though, that John Robinson talked about this week is that SC in the second half of the Arizona State game did not have the spark. They've got the penalties. But they're playing with more enthusiasm than they did last week in the second half. Yeah, as a matter of fact, and USC has already run 21 plays in this quarter. Notre Dame just six. Three and out, three and out for Notre Dame. The draw. Rodney Sermon. Sermon to the 40. Pulled down at the 43-yard line. 18 yards on the play. Now, what is, what is Robinson upset about? to me like he was trying to say that there was a face mask there or a late hit on the sideline. He's looking for any yardage. Well, look at the end of that play. Yeah, I think he thought it was a face mask, but in fact, he just grabbed a hold of his jersey, and then when he threw him... Ah, oh, there it is. Uh, when Jarvis Edison threw it on him, yeah. that's when uh, Robinson wanted the flag for unsportsmanlike conduct. And should have gotten it. Yeah. 43-yard line. Charlie, second half, screens and draws have worked beautifully for USC. Third down three. Not there. Notre Dame stopping Delon Washington. It will be fourth down. 
And with that play, we come to the end of the third quarter. SC may just go for it in the fourth quarter. Stand by. We'll be right back to Notre Dame after these messages from your local station. We start the fourth quarter tied 17-17. And part of the tradition here at Notre Dame Stadium. Jim Wren will be kicking to Alan Rosser. Good kick. Rosser takes it at the eight-yard line. The flag is down. Another flag is down. Rosser sets a couple of tackles. Returns across the 20 out to the 21-yard line. A 48-yard kick, 12-yard return, drawing a pair of flags along the way. Anthony Bolson, the senior from Merced for SC, makes the tackle. Now we'll sort out the flags. During the return, we had an illegal violation of the two-yard belt illegal on the kicking block. team. The penalty will be a decline, first down. Yeah, you do have to allow the punt receiver a cushion to uh, catch the ball. And uh, they call it a two-yard rule. But Rossum always seems to take the chance with the reception. You see the defender tries to get out of the way, but the flag is still thrown. Spot the ball at the 20-yard line, Notre Dame. Three and out, three and out in the second half. They'll lose a couple of yards here. Audrey Denson is cut down by David Gibson. Tonight on NBC, it's more of our must-see weekend, game one of the World Series, 7.30 Eastern time, 4.30 Pacific. It's David Justice and the American League champion Cleveland Indians battle Bobby Bonilla, the National League champion Florida Marlins. That game, that's game one of the World Series tonight at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Second down, 12. Dixon to the left side. He'll pick up about three yards. We'll go only to the 21-yard line. It will be third down and nine. Richard Cook with the tackle. And Charlie, did he look tired? Yes. Did he look a little slow on that sweep? Yes. That 20 carry first half, I think, has just worn Audrey Denson down just a little bit. Decent blocking. There's not the quickness, there's not the strength of legs of Audrey Denson there. That was his 23rd carry in the ball game. Third down nine from the shotgun. Three wide receivers. Ball is flaring both of his backs. Over the middle, knocked down. Good defensive play. He held him. He grabbed a hold of his jersey. Flag down. No question about it. Dalen McCutcheon takes a chance. The official was very late with the flag, but there is no... Watch the matchup. You're going to see Malcolm Johnson when he turns inside. Watch this jersey come away from... Well, it's hard to see there. The right hand had a hold of the jersey, and that allowed yeah. McCutcheon to get back up to the receiver. Maybe we can see it here. No, can't see it there either. It just pulls him back to the point of the reception to knock it away. That, that's an excellent call by the officials, and I'm sure people in Southern California are saying, no way. We didn't see a thing. 33-yard line, first down. Notre Dame in their own territory. Ball game tied 17-17. Fourth quarter. Ball is to throw. Good protection. That may have been a lateral. Doesn't make any news. Caught by Denson. He's dropped to the 30-yard line. A loss of about three on the play. David Gibson, an excellent defensive play for the Trojans. This is when the offense, Ron Paulus, needs somebody else to step up and step forward. They need to find either the tight end, Jabari Holloway down the middle, uh, a running back. Uh, look at the total yards in the second half. Just one. And this is what happened to USC last week against Arizona State. They couldn't do a thing in the second half. Slot near side, second down 12. Here's the draw, Ken Berry. Across the 35 to the 37-yard line. Third down, still five yards to go. Antoine Simmons, the freshman Sacramento, makes the stop. Uh, now this is, I believe, to this point, the play of the game. This next call, pullback draw, just designed to get up through the field, and frankly, USC will give him that play. 
But now, and give credit to Richard Cook, who got it from underneath. Excellent job. And Claiborne came on top. Yeah. But now this call gives the defense a little more rest for Notre Dame. If they don't make it, it's more momentum for USC. SC is showing blitz. They drop out of it. Wallace over the middle, on target, pass is complete, 50-yard line, Malcolm Johnson. McCutcheon had the coverage, he beats it for 13 yards, first down. Notre Dame went with maximum protection, and you see McCutcheon gives him the outside. Johnson does an excellent job. That little move right to McCutcheon just keeps him in his place, and he can run the simple in route, and that's what they needed to find, somebody else to get the ball to there. Johnson's third reception for 40 yards. First down at the 50-yard line. Whistle sound before the play can get off. Flags come flying. On Jabari Holloway, the tight end. Freshman from Riverdale, Georgia. His first start was at Stanford. Yeah, quite first start. snap. We have a false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. The down is still first. He had quite a start against Stanford. One reception, 11 yards, and a touchdown. Yeah, that's it, not a bad. That's his only catch so far this season. But this is where you'd like to have experienced guys in there. You you can't make mistakes like that. Uh, fourth quarter tie game. Now first down, 15. 11 and a half minutes to go. As pressure steps away, a delayed screen. Dixon manages to salvage some yardage, and a flag comes flying from 15 yards downfield. Away from the plate. Yes, too. completely. But well thrown by the back judge. <laughs> Had a tight spiral on it. Personal foul against USC. My goodness. Charlie, you and I both saw that was at least 15 yards away from the sideline where the play took place. Yeah. We believe on Mark Cassano. After the play, Bobby Brown. We have a dead ball. Personal foul on the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. In the second half. That's the that's the uh, the play. We didn't see the penalty. Second half, USC has been penalized eight times for 90 oh yards in the second half. 90 yards. They haven't. Uh, they didn't see the initiative. They see the yellow flag. Another very costly penalty. There's Cassano, one of their best defensive players. It appeared that Bobby Brown, 88, tried to make a block on Cassano. Did Cassano didn't like it? Got up, and uh, that caused the penalty. But you have to have some presence of mind, understanding a 7-17 tie on the road. You can't do anything like that. Second down nine. The way you get back is by winning the ball game. That's right. SC 40 yard line. Paulus deep over the middle, right on target. Good pass, Bobby Brown. 31 yard line. Cassano with the cover. No, it was Ryan Tiesca, the senior from Clovis, who has replaced Cassano. Yeah. Now that's that's the damage that Cassano did. John Robinson takes him off the field to try to smarten him up a little bit. They throw a square in right in his spot. Cassano comes back on the next snap. Darius Jackson in his quarterback, Paul House. This is the short yardage. Dixon, not there. He is hit. He falls forward. May have, may have been closer than I thought at first. He was hit about a yard shy of the first down, but he manages to fall forward. And if he gets the mark, he will have the first down. Well, he'll bring out the chains to figure it out. George Perry with the tackle. And, Charlie, if they don't make it, their field goal kicker is standing right there next to Bob Davey. It would be a 30, 40 yard attempt or 47 yard attempt. This close, I would think they'd probably just go for it. Absolutely. I don't think they have any choice. Yes. It's not. Inches. Fourth down. Darius Jackson, the quarterback, the junior from Tupelo. Jamie Spencer, fullback, 33, brings the play in. He's in the backfield along with Denson. 
And Tony Driver. They need just inches. Quarterback Steve. That's it. That should go. That should go. The officials are marking the spot at the 30-yard line first down. Nine minutes, 56 seconds remaining. Tied at 17. Actually, it was pretty close. I mean, it, 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 it's kind of one of those generic spots yes. with that many people. And John Robinson, I think, knows his assistants. No way. John Robinson had been around the game a long time. He knew. Jamie Spencer, a late arrival for Notre Dame. He was not in the huddle. Blitz. Dixon. Touchdown saved. Rashard Cook got him. Just barely. 23-yard line. Charlie, you're going to see the blitz. A good pickup, 33. Spencer, he almost breaks that tackle. 12th play of the drive. Jamie Spencer. It'll be third down, yard and a half to go for the first down. Fourth quarter, clock moving. And Charlie again, just extended by that penalty. And on Cassano gave uh, Notre Dame's offense just a little bit of life, just another deep breath. Dennis Davis, a freshman from Reseda. Last tackle for USC. Third down, yard and a half. Gibson, this one tackle, has the first down. Out of bounds, 15-yard line. Rashard Cook takes him out of bounds. Picks up the first down. First and 10, 15-yard line. Eight and a half minutes left. Now, this is his formation again. This is Pettigrew. This is a Jabari Holloway. They pull Rosenthal. An excellent job by Audrey Denson getting around the corner. It looked like Claiborne 55. I think their best defensive tackler uh, underestimated uh, Aut Denson's speed. Couldn't get out there to make the tackle. First down at the FC 15-yard line. There have been no turnovers in the ballgame. Dixon will lose a couple of yards on the play. <laughs> they have rode this horse oh. all day, haven't they? <laughs> My Dixon goodness. Dixon one tired ball carrier. He's already uh, collected his third straight 100-yard rushing day. Now 28 carries, 121 yards, and a touchdown. 28 carries. 28's not bad, but he had 20 in the first half. 15th play of the drive. Second down, 12. Benson, a little stutter step. Uh, I think your observation is right. I think he's tired. Yeah, you, I, I'm tired just saying on his distance. 29th carry of the game. And you can, look at that. You can, you can get leg weary. He, he's a competitor. He doesn't want to come out of the game. Clement Stokes has been his backup, a 100-yard rusher. Last week, we've seen little or nothing of Clement Stokes, Stokes in the second half. Third down, 11. Passing formation, follows to throw. Over the middle, behind Malcolm Johnson, incomplete. It will be fourth down. That was a poor throw by Ron Paulus. Yes. They wanted crossing patterns all day long against USC. Practiced it all week. This thrown where Johnson can't make the catch, and if he does, he's going to be tackled, and he's not going to have enough yardage for the third down conversion. So 7.06. Time remaining. It's all on the shoulders now of Jim Sanson. He has made one of three, hitting for 27, missing from 45 and 34. But the 23-yard line, an attempt of 33 yards. It is no good from 33 yards away. Sansom has made one. Now he has missed three. The score matches the holder, Hunter Smith jersey. We are tied at 7.
17 as he just slides it by to the right side. The Trojans celebrate. We're tied. Jim Sampson missing three field goals. He has made only one. We're tied at 17. FC has the ball at their own 20-yard line. Just over seven minutes to go in the ball game. Malachi McKenzie from Mission Viejo is the remaining back. And he may pick up the first down near the 30-yard line as Harper and Rawson make the tackle. And that's what we were talking about on Jim Sanson. And a kicker that misses one out of three, it puts so much pressure on your coaching staff and your offense, you've got to get him almost a point-blank range. And he's had his opportunities, hooked one and pushed two. Second down and a yard at the 29. McKenzie is hit behind the line of scrimmage. You lose about a half a yard. Corey Miner was there. No gain. Third down. Miner just jumps right inside the tight end. Uh, that, that's a, an upperclassman take advantage, taking advantage of a freshman tight end. The, play, the freshman tight end will learn. What should he do in that case? Take a little tighter split. And you shoot at the inside shoulder of the man, not the middle of him. Third down a yard. I have Cinda is in along with McKenzie. McKenzie gets the call, has the first down. 32 yard line, Bobby Howard. Bad left knee and all, makes the tackle. And he has been very active as a linebacker for Notre Dame in the ballgame. McKenzie now 17 carries, 64 yards for the freshman. Playing with that separated left shoulder, he hurt in the Arizona game. He reached out and he caught a helmet right on the point of the shoulder inside. First down. Box rolling right. Throws on target. Pass is complete to R.J. Soward. Soward has his hands on the ball again. He has scored one of the four touchdowns, two by USC, two by Notre Dame. Rossum was there for Notre Dame. Well, Charlie, it's been a long time since they got the ball to Sauer. Just a, a little flash pattern out in the flat, roll to him. Again, those very soft hands and a, an extremely athletic receiver. After he catches the ball, he's more dangerous than uh, many receivers I've seen in playing in college football today. Sauer, three receptions, 45 yards. 39-yard line, second down two. Sauer now has touched the ball five times. He has scored one touchdown. McKenzie, little cross buck to the 40-yard line. Jimmy Friday with the tackle. Let's go down to John Dockery. Charlie and Trump, let me give you an idea of the feel on both sidelines. First on the Notre Dame sideline, everybody very serious, concerned. Those field goals have taken a little juice out of them. On the other sideline, the Trojan sideline, the coaches are going up and down the sidelines to every player saying, you're killing yourselves with penalties. No penalties. Play it straight. Third down and two. Little lob pass. Hit the defender in the back. Harper. Billy Miller, the intended receiver. 5-11 time remaining. And Charlie, Mel Dansby was unblocked, was right in the, the face of the quarterback. And then Devon Harper, a corner playing safety, does an excellent job. Puts himself between the quarterback and the receiver. Hits him right between the one and the ten. And watch Mel Dansby. This really hurries things up. He jumps right inside the right guard, actually held by the right guard. And it goes as an incomplete pass. Jim Rand will kick it away. The dangerous Alan Rawson set up for a fair catch. and then stepped way away from it. It was a short kick. Bounced on the 25-yard line, rolled to about the 23. Good for only 37 yards. It was down at that point. We're tied at 17. Five minutes and one second time remaining in the ball game. We are tied at 17. The score that we had at halftime. Notre Dame scored first. FC came back to tie at 7-7. Notre Dame up 14-7. FC tied at 14-14. Notre Dame up 17-14. FC tied at 17-17. That's where we remain. Notre Dame from their own 23-yard line. Ball is rolling to the near side. Goes on the run. He hits Audrey Denson. Denson goes out at the 28-yard line, chased by David Gibson. Now, we've talked about Denson and his running. Last year at USC, he carried the ball 33 times. Yeah, he had 160 in that game. 
but they can't seem to find anybody else to consistently give it to, throw it to, or find. Second down and four, 29-yard line. Ball is to Denson. Slides left, comes right, 40-yard line, first down. Nice move right at the line of scrimmage. Showed some leg strength there. Maybe he got a little like life back in his leg, but this first move he makes right up here, that little wiggle gets him through the line of scrimmage. Again, Ken Berry, a decent block up front, but he it looks like he's got a little more life back in his, in his legs. David Gibson is the injured player for the Trojans. Denson now 30 carries, 133 yards, and a touchdown in this ballgame. That is a season high in yardage. Gibson from Mission Viejo played his high school ball at Notre Dame. Actually, this assists Notre Dame. It just gives Audrey Denson a little breather here. You hope the best for Gibson. He's got the entire medical staff out there attending to him, and it looks like he's going to be able to get up and well, let's wait and see. Yeah. And he's all right. Going to run to the sideline. Uh, the, the mind game that's now going on between offensive coordinator Jim Coletto and uh, Keith Burns, defensive uh, coordinator for uh, SC, is does Notre Dame take a chance and throw the ball here? Do they keep trying to figure out ways to give Utrecht Denson the ball, just keep running it? If you're a defensive coordinator, do you blitz? Do you blitz to stop the run? This is a pass formation, Charlie. Ball is to throw. Just dumps it off over the middle. Flag is down. Ken Berry pulled it in. But normally that is holding against the offense when it's thrown in that spot. Chris Claiborne with the tackle. Holding against the Irish. A legal hand to the face. 429 time remaining. Is it 79 Rosenthal? Yes, the yeah. right hand right up there on, underneath the face mask. On Cedric Jefferson, the senior from Fort Worth. Official spot the ball back at the 23-yard line. It'll be first down and 27. Penalty from the spot of the foul. Now again, if you're USC, do you blitz in this situation? First and 27, or do you play the soft zone? Flag down, maybe a legal substitution. Flag thrown by the referee. Mike was yeah, Mike was out. Mike was off. We forgot to hit the switch to tell us exactly what happened. And there, there's the player late off of the field. You can't put more than 11 in the huddle. You got to start with 11. And when you remove one late, that is an illegal substitution. So now it's first and 32. First down, 32. Little swing to the right side to Dinson. The flag is down. That'll go for a late hit out of bounds against Aaron Williams. Another SC mistake. You've got to know where the sideline is. And remember, that was first down and 32. It'll be a dead ball foul against USC. Giving life back to Notre Dame. Here's 57. He's the man who's going to... I don't know why he doesn't stop. I mean, uh, he's on the ground and out of bounds. Yes. No reason for that whatsoever, and that is a first down. For USC, now 156 yards in penalties, the 50th time they've been flagged, and it carries with it a first down. Remember first down at 32 just a moment ago? Now it's first and 10 at the 30-yard line. Ball is play action. 
action fake. Goes deep, overthrows the receiver, looking for a flag. It does not fly. Bobby Brown, the intended receiver, Brian Kelly had the coverage. I thought he had a fistful of jersey. Yeah, it, it certainly looked that way. And you see Bobby Brown go across the formation. So he kind of loafs a little bit here and phase it there. You see the contact before the ball gets there, but no flag, so it's second and ten. Notre Dame at their own 30-yard line. Three minutes and 50 seconds, that is the time remaining. Well, these are dumb penalties that yes. USC has taken for the most part today, you know? SC showing blitz. They drop out of it. Here's Dixon. Cut off inside. Heads for the corner. Flag is down. Taken out of bounds. You lose a couple of yards on the play. McCutcheon takes him out of bounds. We'll go back to the flag. Well, I, I guess these young men want to play overtime. <laughs> well, they're headed in that direction. <laughs> but with all these flags on either team that are just devastating. We are tied 17-17. Play. We have a hold on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay, second down. The ball goes back to the 18-yard line. Trojans are playing like the Raiders. You know, when they were in L.A., they used to get 25 penalties a game. Second down and 22. But remember, for Notre Dame, it was first down at 32 a moment ago. Yes. They got it back on a Trojan penalty, and then they gave it back at second down and 22. As Ron Paulus arrives at the huddle, he talked to us. He's been taking a lot of flack, but he, he said, I've decided that I'm just going to be okay. He has a great attitude. I am really impressed with him. Three wide receivers from the shotgun. Low snap, picks it up. Goes far side, passes complete. Spinning move. Nelson getting away from the first Trojan, but the second one was there to wrap him up. Three and a half minutes, time remaining. Brian Kelly with that last tackle. The 17-17 tie goes on. Charlie, that was a very soft zone. Obviously, long yardage situation. It's going to be tough to pause to get the thing down and where they can pick up the first time. Screen works here because that, that, that zone is going to be dropping a lot. 23-yard line, third down and 17. Low snap, Paul from the shotgun. Chet steps aside. He's got to throw it. He can't run for 17. Just kind of lobs it over the defender. Barry has it out of bounds. He picks up the first down on the scramble. 19 yards. They needed 17. They got it. Plus two. The scramble by Ron Paulus. Then he signaled for the receiver to just drop off and go soft. He did. He lobbed it over the defenders at 46 yard line. First down, 251. Time remaining. It's Gibson 22 who was kind of on the spot there. Do I come up and stop the run by Ron Paulus or do I hang back? Good direction by Ron Paulus. Ken Berry does make the catch. Joey Gatherall, the speedster, is wide to the far side. Paulus sets, comes back left. Denson, incomplete. Antoine Simmons had the cover. Gatherall will come back out. Bobby Brown comes back in. The ball at the 46-yard line, second down and 10. Jim Sampson, who has been the GOAT for Notre Dame, can he become the hero? Second down from the shotgun. Deep over the middle, tipped it is intercepted. Mark Cassano to the 35, the 30, the 29-yard line. Cassano, who made a key mistake. For the, against Notre Dame that cost the Trojans now comes up with the interception first turnover of the ball game Ken Berry with the tackle Bobby Brown was the intended receiver ball was tipped they're going to see Brown come in here the ball goes right through his hands and Cassano is there to pick the ball off it's a square in route, bounces up in the air, and Cassano, Charlie, as you rightly stated, has a chance to undo a huge mistake. Give USC her 
perfect field position. Brown really made no attempt to catch it whatsoever. Cassano picks his spots. Remember last year, the pass deflection ending the game in overtime? He's the one that deflected it. Only turnover the game to this point. That last interception. 30-yard line of Notre Dame. Jumping to the outside. McKenzie to the 23-yard line, brought down by Benny Gilbo. 2.25 and counting time remaining. Meanwhile, Adam Abrams on the sideline. That's a look at Cassano, the junior from Colony, Texas. Abrams in the ball game has hit from 42 yards out. We've got a timeout call. Notre Dame wants to stop the clock. Two minutes and five seconds. We are still tied 17-17 in the 69th meeting of these two teams. All right, here's the interceptor. You're going to see Claiborne also come into view. He's right in front of Bobby Brown. He sits in there in a zone, kind of disrupts the pattern a little bit. Ball bounces off Brown's arms, and Cassano makes the interception, the only turnover by either team to this point in the game. Lugs it down the sideline to give his team an, a heck of an opportunity with 2.05 to go in this game. Second down and four at the Notre Dame 23 yard line. McKenzie dropped for a loss of the 25. Corey Bennett, the senior from Doorville, Georgia, slicing through to bring him down at the 25 yard line. It will be third down and six. All right, now this would be a 42-yard attempt by their kicker. Hugh Jackson on the right, John Robinson. Whether or not they take a chance to throw the ball here on third down and six or stay with something more conservative. There's the kicker, Abrams. His career long is 46 yards. That was in the Rose Bowl against Northwestern as a freshman. He has a 42-yarder in this ball game. SC will take a timeout. One minute and 25 seconds. That is the time remaining. Meanwhile, just to do some housekeeping on numbers, Malifo McKenzie, a career-high 20 carries for SC. He has rushed for 74 yards. Number 19, Adam Abrams. 5'9", 185-pounder from Bishop's High School in La Jolla. His brother Eric was the place kicker for Stanford. So they were used to this kind of pressure. They even kicked against each other yeah. while they were in high school. A family of kickers. Yes. A family of kickers. Uh, the big choice on the side, of, there's the other kicker. He, he is the long distance kicker, Adam Rendon. He, he kicks off. But, but the choice on USC sideline here is, do we play it safe or do we try to go with a high percentage pass, something down the middle? It seems to me that as uh, much respect as 18 Soward has gotten all day long, some kind of motion and him. And of course, for Notre Dame, and Greg Madison, the defensive coordinator, just exactly what do I do here? Blitz or defend? Third down six. Pump fight. Fumble. It bounced right up in the hands of John Fox. He fumbled it. It was like a basketball dribble. He came up 20-yard line, close to the first down, maybe a yard shy. Clock is stopped, 109, time remaining. They'll set it at the 20-yard line. They need to go to the 19 for the first down. Corey Miner and Bobby Howard were there for Notre Dame. Yeah, but Charlie, they don't need to make the first down. I think they have confidence in Abrams to uh, make a kick from here. This is a good choice. Fox has run very little today, but he's run at absolutely the perfect time. The thing just bounces away from him. It's kind of pulled out by his own player. We continue on our must-see weekend on NBC Sports. One minute, nine seconds left in the ballgame. A 37-yard field goal attempt by SC. Pat Swanson, the snapper. Jim Ren, the holder. Adam Abrams. The junior from Bishops in San Diego. To break the tie. And he nails it. And SC's 
starts the celebration, but we still have one minute and five seconds remaining. A 37-yard field goal, the 69th meeting between SC and Notre Dame. This one was for the history books. Abrams does this very coolly. Good snap. Wren puts it right down. Nothing to it. Not difficult. All set up by the interception. The only turnover of the game. A pass that bounces off the hands of Bobby Brown into the arms of Cassano of USC. And the kick is good. He's been two for two. Notre Dame's kicker has been one for four. That is the difference in the game. Abrams hitting from 42 and 37 yards away. This one, though, if it stands up, will be the biggest that he has ever made. Well, John Robinson, a bit of sigh of relief that he looks up and says, oops, we still got it, 105 to go. And John Robinson uh, identified this uh, game as panic time. Well, USC did not panic. Alan Rossum, the deep back, now is moving up. Remember, he opened the ball game with a 56-yard kickoff return. Adam Rendon will kick it away for SC in the twilight at Notre Dame. And Rossum will field it at the 7-yard line to the 20. That will be it, 24, maybe the 25-yard line. 18 yards on the return. Zeke Moreno with the tackle. He's a freshman from Chula Vista. One minute left for Notre Dame to tie an overtime or a touchdown to go ahead. They will be going from their own 24-yard line. Well, Notre Dame all day long has not been able to throw the ball deep down the field, Charlie. Obviously, with a minute left, one timeout. That's their only choice. They open from the shotgun, low snap, SC with a four-man rush. Dixon underneath the coverage. 29-yard line, that'll go for five. It'll be second down and five. Clock is ticking away. Jim Sanson, one of four, hitting from 27 yards, missing field goals of 45, 34, and 33. Could he get one more chance for the tie? Ball is thrown, sideline pass, caught. Malcolm Johnson immediately out of bounds, stops the clock, 42-yard line, 31 seconds. That is the time remaining. 13, 13 yards on the play. Probably One foot in, that's all you need. That's all you need. He and gets, he gets it. He gets both in. That's an excellent throw by Ron Paul. Is through over the corner, outside of the safety. First down, Notre Dame, their own 42-yard line. Ball is shotgun, four-man run. Sets in the pocket, dents it again. He'll head for the sideline. And he is brought down Here's before he can get to the sideline. And we have whistle sounding. 20 seconds on the clock. Timeout has been taken by Notre Dame. That is a call. That is a play that the quarterback cannot make. You Tell me why. You can't get sacked, and you can't throw it to a receiver who is stopped. You need to find a receiver who is moving. Now, Ron Paulus went through his reads, and you see how deep the zone is dropping, but you need to find somebody moving. Denson is standing dead still. The defense is waiting for that particular player, the one standing still, so they can stop him, keep him in bounds, and keep the clock running. So now, Jim Sanson pacing the sideline, the sophomore from Scottsdale, Arizona. But now they had to waste that last timeout. They had to use that last timeout, Charlie. Now they're they're really in trouble here because it's hard to get the ball down the field. Of course, in college football, the clock will stop momentarily as they reset the chains. But you're not at the mercy of a flag or a freak play. Second down and 11. The ball at the 41-yard line. Malcolm Johnson will be wide to this side. Again, ball is in the shotgun. Pump fake goes deep along the sideline. It is incomplete. Johnson, the intended receiver. McCutcheon had the coverage. 13 seconds time remaining. Nothing wrong with that attempt. I mean, you got to try to make the play, get a flag, something down the sideline. 
Third down and 11. As time is running out as the sun sets over Notre Dame Stadium, SC is up 20 to 17. Adam Abrams, a 37-yard tie-breaking field goal with one minute and five seconds left in the ballgame. Now we have only 13 remaining. Dixon is in the slot. Paulus has pressure. He is sacked down at the 31-yard line. No timeouts. The clock will take the inexorable countdown to the end of this, the 69th meeting, and John Robinson is celebrating. Sultan Abdumale. And here comes the SC band to join the celebration. Two head coaches, both who have been taking a lot of heat. First things first, the Chevrolet Players of the Year. Adam Abrams of USC, Autry Denson of Notre Dame. In recognition of their efforts, we'll tell you about that in a moment. First, let's go down to John Dockery. Thank you, Charlie. Congratulations, Coach. What an emotional victory. What does it mean to you? Well, it means that we got a chance to have a good season. You know, I mean, I mean, this is a football team, and we've, we've had a hard time, but we've never lost faith in ourselves. We played lousy a couple times, <laughs> but this football team, you know, we had fun today. It was a fun day. A lot of field goals, 106 field goals attempted today, I think, <laughs> but we made ours. Does it take a little pressure off you? No, no I'm not. I'm not important. Guys have played in the game are important. That's I'm not important. We're going to have a good season. But this isn't Custer's last stand for anybody. It's a great win for our players and for USC. Did you feel like the fates were with you? Your quarterback fumbles the ball. It bounces and comes right back up to him. It's almost so as it was meant to be for you today. We practiced that a lot. winner. Thank you, John. <laughs> and the SC celebration continues. Mark Casano, the interception that set it all up, leading to the winning field goal. The final is SC 20, Notre Dame 17. We continue on our must-see weekend on NBC Sports. We'll be back in a moment.